regular meeting dated January 19th at 6.01 p.m. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for our town. We thank you for the incredible people we live in it. We pray that you would give us wisdom. Help us. Help us to be together on the very good things we want to do for this city. I pray a special blessing on each of the households here tonight. And may all that we do glorify your son Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, the standard protocol we use when we complete the Pledge of Allegiance is we ask for citizens' comments. If they're given three minutes, then we review the consent items, which are the minutes of bigger meetings of December 15th and any special meeting that was called, especially that was called December 19th, and the appropriate reports. However, tonight I'm going to shift up the protocol a little bit. We have an issue that we're going to discuss that may require legal counsel. So that's going to be addressed first because I have a narrow win window uh, for a legal counsel to represent us in this case, the, on this issue. So we'll have a quick discussion. We're going to 7-2 and 7-10 will be a part of it due to the time limitation that we have. And then we'll go into executive session. So 7-2. Review discussion, possible action by the council to approve the amended financial audit for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2021. It's presented by the audit firm. Hello. Arnold Walker, Arnold and Company, PC. This was tabled from the previous meeting, October 20th, 2022, item 6-7, and to include status of the audit and communications for the auditing firm table from the previous meeting. Bob Arnold and Luke Arnold, thank you gentlemen for coming. You're welcome. I'll open up the floor for your comments first. Okay. And I'll keep this brief, and not because I don't believe that it's important. So, uh, I've been at this a whole long time, and one thing I don't like is crow, but there's a little bit, I got a bowl of crow that I need to eat that uh, I brought on myself here, and so I'm, you know, I will uh, get into that a little bit. But uh, we had received we had received an email. There was concern about the 21 audit as amended, and that the concern was great enough that the city felt that we needed to return two years of audit fees. Well. That kind of took me back because I don't even know how to do that. I've, ne <laughs> I've never done that. And I'll just say, and I know we have the attorney here, and I don't mean it flippantly, this is part of the eating crow. But I don't plan to do that either. Not voluntarily. Okay? And the reason is this, and I've thought about it a great deal, since that time, to me, it it almost becomes that nothing that was done in those periods is worth a dang. And so, 
zero is zero, give him my money back. But I would say that <coughs> there is value in what was done. I don't see where there is any financial harm that is, in other words, if Luke and I came and because of us, we caused you to lose $5,000, we pay you $5,000. But this, I, I don't see where there is a monetary harm. And then that's the basis for my stance with respect to this. Uh, whenever we became aware of what needed changing, we took care of that. And I think that uh, within uh, you know, that it is reasonably presented, no one is misled, and there has not been a measurable financial harm. And I could go through numbers and tell you why I think this about this number and that number, but that's not, uh, I think what I need to do is listen and I'll respond as best I can. And if I can't tell you this evening, I'll get your response. We want to, <coughs> We want to maintain a relationship with you folks. And we go a bunch of places, all up in the, and around here, and I don't want something like this causing a problem. Like I say, that's all I brought tonight. And that's because that's how much my wife gave me before I left. <laughs> but, I'm not going to part with that at this point in time. And, I, 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 and as I say, I don't mean it like I'm telling you folks. I don't care what you think. And if you don't like it, too bad. Because that's not my heart on the matter. My heart on the matter is we not cost you anything. I don't want you to cost us something. We want to be fair about it and get it done. And I appreciate your listening. And I know I rambled. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Any comments from council members? Are we going to have a discussion back and forth? Are we going to go into executive session? What do we need? You can ask any questions, you are because when they leave, yeah. the executive session, they won't be available. All right. Um, so you did receive my email and my concerns about the revised audit. Yes, sir, I did. Did you feel that any of those concerns were valid? Yes. Even with the revised audit? Yes. Okay. Because I, and, and as I say, part of this is eating crow. I apologize that I didn't spell analysis right. It shouldn't have gone out that way. That was not a significant problem. Well, but that was, it was in there. And so... It's in there, so I got that one kind of choked down. Uh, and so I guess I will try, Cody, I'll try to just answer you. You drive and I'll try to respond. How's that? Um, sure. Uh, as far as a couple of typos, those are irrelevant, you know. Okay. Obviously. Um, as far as the harm to the city, you know, the city relies on this information for how they decide to finance something. Like, a big part of the financial statement is this debt that we have with the federal government, which he was on the council at that time, and he discussed the possibility of doing this, that paying for these things piecemeal, rather than taking on this big debt. So he was looking at the cost of borrowing that money from a local bank. So, you know, there can be uh, harm from not being able to re rely on the decisions. But also, you know, over how, how long have, uh, has your firm audited the city? More than five years, to tell you what the first year is. It's at, at least 2010. 2010. At least. I haven't yeah. been able to go back further than that. Well, and, and I think 
the first year we did audit, I don't think they'd been having the audit. I think I, when I went through the check so register. So whatever you start out with us, that's the right answer. When I went through the check register back in 2000, I found no other payments to any other auditors. So I did assume that we did not have an audit right. before you for at least 10 years. Right. Um, uh, things, also things I didn't mention in the CMO that were in the check register was the original payment from the, or the loan from the EDC uh, that paid for the Lone Star Elementary property, um, insurance payments, electric payments. There were other uh, things other than the, uh, the appraisal district uh, documentation of it. Um, so I, but I'd sent you the, the email yes, sure. with the problems I had with the... I'm going to get over here where I can hear you better. Um, my name. If I put my back to you, are you going to be mad? No, yes, sir. You're fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put my back to you. Well, I can do it. Um, yes, yeah, sir. So the city acquired the property from the school district in about 2014. True. And uh, at that time... Million dollars? Uh, the area where it was adjusted is in the uh, capital assets of governmental activities. Yes, sir. Right. And so if you look at those back to 2012 with Arnold Walker and Arnold's audits, uh, it, it was never accounted for uh, when it came onto the books, when the money was spent to purchase it, uh, then when it went uh, back, it went, it went to zero. So it, on the books it was zero, and then 1.1 million, and then zero, and then 380,000. Yes. And none of that was ever uh, accounted for. Um, and as far as the capital assets for government activities, it was a double of what our capital assets were. So it's, it's a material misstatement. And y'all had mentioned what is the scope of this audit. But for a governmental audit, it is a reasonable assurance that our financial statements are not materially misstated, mm -hmm. right? And they were materially misstated for 10 years. And so the harm is in the payment for uh, financial statements that we could not rely on to make decisions, uh, whether they were investment decisions or, or otherwise. And I, and I guess, and, and this is my, I'll get my fork and get another bite. So, but there is value, and and I guess I need to start with, and I, I'm gonna wear everybody out, and they're going nobody's gonna like me. I agree, there's value. But but here is this: these financial statements are not my financial statements. Mm -hmm. These are your financial statements. In a in a in a in a perfect world. I would come and you would hand me this and I would audit that. But because we're in Northeast Texas and it's common, we actually assist in preparing. We actually pretty well do the financial statements. But the responsibility for the financial statements in, in the end is yours. Or is it it's the city's, not yours, Cody, but but the city's. And one of the things that we do each year is we get a representation letter and one of the things that's covered is is you know <laughs> have you told us everything you need to tell us have you shown us everything you need have you given us what we've asked for and are your do you have do you have uh, perfected title to your fixed assets or show the related debt and do you have them down at appropriate values? Mm -hmm. Well, if we went back and looked at all the letters, they say, yes, we do for every year. Now, because I'm from Northeast Texas too, I go, but just like Ms. Chisholm, if Ms. Chisholm signed that letter, she'd be going, I think Bob knows the heck what he's doing. I'll sign that based on Bob. And so I don't make a lot out of that, about a representation letter. Now, is it important? You're supposed to do it, all those things? Yeah. Does anybody know what everything on those things means before they sign them? 
No. No. So, so I guess, and I'm and I'm a little, I'm a little slow on the draw on the harm, based on a fixed asset being understated, because we're not typically going and borrowing money on a particular asset. Uh, now, other than if we bought police cars or we did our lease or those kind of things. But I don't see where that building property has a big impact on your borrowing capabilities. Let me see, as I said here. Uh, it's stated, uh, I'm not sure which page, but it's, uh, let's see. Over time, increases or decreases in the city's net position is an indicator of whether its financial health is improving or deteriorating. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That was another problem I really had with the revised audit, because it, it indicated that our financial health had improved when it hadn't. Well, your net position has, and that's one of the indicators. And as far as the responsibility, I mean, a lot of people, when they, they look at a, an auditor's report like this, there's a lot there, but there's really only a couple of things in most of these things. It's, yes. it's pretty much the same everywhere in the entire country. There's just a couple of words. You know, such as qualified, unqualified, adverse. Yes. There's a whole page, and those are the only three words that matter. Um, unqualified is the good one. That's also sort of surprising. Uh, but it states right here in the uh, the independent auditor's report, uh, management, that's us, is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of these financial statements, uh, et cetera. Um, and the maintenance of this design, implementation, and maintenance of internal control relevant to the preparation and fair present presentation of financial statements that are free from material misstatement. Unfortunately, the management has approved of financial statements that were materially misstated for 10 years. And so we hire the employees to help with this and we hire the auditor. We're required by law to have the audit. That's why we do it. We wouldn't do it otherwise. Um, well, the auditor's yeah. responsibility is the very next section. Uh, can I see that copy I have here? Sure. Highlighted. Uh, You're making my bowl bigger, not smaller. The uh, so the the auditor's responsibility. Um, long story short, that the audit obtains reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements are free from material misstatements. That is the main thing. That is their responsibility. We're, we're we our responsibility is to make sure that it's done. Theirs is to do it. Um, so that is the scope of a government audit. It's not a, a private industry audit where you say, we've got a problem here, get in there and look at it. Uh, the scope of a government audit, audit is well defined by the law that requires, requires us to get it. I'm with you. Um, I, so I had sent you this uh, email, and I, I mean, there's several paragraphs, and I guess each paragraph uh, makes so I guess, point. rather than just you wear me out here, or <laughs> I don't mean disrespectful, but I know you got a house full of people, and I don't like going to the principal's office in front of the whole class, but here I see it. So, it's, it's, and I'll take my licking. This, but, is, this is not a fun position. No, anybody, it's not. It's, and I understand. And so, I, so I am, I'll just, I'll go back to this. I don't really know how else to help you. Your, I think your assets are on your books at this point at a reasonable amount as determined by not y'all, not me, third party that knows what real estate is supposed to be worth evidently. That's done. That change didn't, dis, did not, did not affect the revenue one penny. It did not affect the expenses one penny. It did not change the bank balances one penny. Now, if I'm on a board, if I'm on the council, the bank and how much comes in, how much goes out is at the top of my list on what's going on. Okay? So, 
that doesn't change. And it's like we're where, irrespective of what was or who or why. And I got to looking back. I look back, Cody. The only thing that I could find anywhere about the transaction was the that when it came back on our books was a mention in the minutes. There were two EDC payments. Two EDC payments to... There was a loan made by the EDC to the city that paid the school district. For, okay, well, then, then I did not, I don't, I didn't see it in what I looked back at, okay? So, and it would have been in that year. Okay. Uh, I, in that, that, at that time, I asked for, I don't know, 15 years worth. Um, and it's there. There's insurance payments. There's electric bills. There's um, okay. all of that. And that is, that's in my bowl of crow. But I'm back, and I know this young man or young lady's on the phone here, and y'all have got other things to do. I don't know how else to help you. I'll just tell you. I didn't come here planning on saying Cody, Mayor, and Tina, I, I say to City, the, we'll be back or we'll mail you a check. That is not in my plan. Right. I okay? stated in my email, um, this is just uh, something I thought was reasonable. You know? Yes, sir. Not asking for anything related to back to 2010. Mm -hmm. we've, we've paid. See, I don't like to have this conversation, but I feel a duty to. And I, to and do I respect I, that. I, I do. A, I, I a, do. I have a duty, I feel like, to do the same as if this were my company or my organization. Yes, sir. To represent the taxpayer. And this is what I would do if it were my organization. And so we're talking about we've paid 100000 or more. And, you know, that's, that's what accounting costs because the CPA is a highly. Uh, and, I've, and, I, and I'm back to, I believe, that throughout the course of time, the city received that value. We've satisfied TPA grants, uh, TDA grants. We've satisfied Texas Parks and Wildlife grants. We walked the city through the uh, debt process and the bookings and all those things for on a project that was what started maybe in 18 or 19 or before, but through those years, we have helped maintain the fixed asset records. <coughs> We've prepared financial statements. And I don't see anywhere, even if I went and erased what I changed on the amended, if I took it off, I don't think that affects your city other than you know it's not on there. But as far as as far as grants, borrowings, tax rates, all those things, I just don't see that there is a direct interplay. And so and I know I'm repeating. And so all that say, I guess what I need is and I I hate that this happened. Because uh, it looks like we don't know what the heck's going on, and I think that's not the case down in here, but <laughs> my face is red, I'll just tell you. My position is that the, the auditor's primary responsibility is that our financial statements are free from material misstatements. Yes. And over 10 years, or more than 10 years, how many years has it been since 2010? What year is this? At least 13 years. Um, so over 13 years and over $100,000 worth of audits easily. This city's budget for street uh, maintenance is $6,000 a year. Uh -huh. And so uh, if the primary responsibility was that the, the audits were free from material misstatement and they were not in any of these years, uh, then that was harm. Um, and, and, and what I need, you, and, and I say my, and because I take it as this is on me, and I take it that this is on me.
but I have a letter for each of those years where representatives of the city said, we have, in essence, approved these numbers and they're what you, we don't see anything else we need to tell you about. But that is not my that is not my defense, if you will. My defense is back to just what I said. I don't think that we've cost your city ten cents. We've not cost your city ten cents. If we did, we'd pay you ten cents, I promise. So I just uh It'll be up to you folks to tell me where you want to go from here. And I'm not, I'm not a tell people go to blank kind of guy. That's, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying this is my position on it. This is what I've thought through and I believe is right. And that's where I'm going to hang out for the time being until somebody makes me do something else. And they'll, <laughs> they're going to have to poke me pretty hard. Okay? okay. Gentlemen, all this being said, thank, thank you for your comments and exploration of this. I'm going to call us in the closed session now because of the limited audience that we have our legal firm. So, so it's provided under Section 551.074 Texas Open Meetings Act. City Council is now going to retire to closed session at 626. PM to seek the advice of legal counsel for conflict litigation against Arnold Walker and Walker and Arnold. And when I say I follow you, I mean. We will open or reopen the open session. The closed session was adjourned at 6.57 p.m. and no official action or vote was conducted during the closed session. Council, what is your decision? Let me hear a motion. motion to go forward with legal action to recoup. I have a motion that we go state. forward with legal action to recoup any losses to the city. Do I hear a second to that? Do I hear a second? I don't hear a second. So I might understand that the council is not going to go forward with any legal action. Is that correct? Do I hear another motion? Do you want to go ahead and accept? report that we got and sign off on it and drop any course of legal action do you want them to rewrite and make any uh, adjustments to it sign off I'll say on that he, he agreed that the revised audit was worse than the first one so you want to require a revised audit? Another uh, one? I, I think you'd asked if, if anyone wanted to make a motion yes. that we approve the revised audit. And I was just saying that he agreed the revised audit was worse than the first one. Okay, so, so what do you want to do? So between the options of uh, 
not doing anything, continuing to have the first audit, approving the revised audit, or asking for more revisions, um, accepting the revised audit is probably the worst option. Okay. Based on the information we were given in closed session from the attorney, I don't think that pursuing legal action is going to be worth the cost. Uh, I don't remember him saying one it. Of, like one that. of the things that that he told us was, ma'am, uh, one of the things he told us. Uh, I think it's way my opinion to where I'm not opposed to having him revise it, but I do not want to pursue legal action. Make, okay. a motion, make a motion to that effect so we can get this done. I would like to make a motion that we go back to them and have them re revise the audit with the correct changes and provide that back to us so we can review it to sign off on it again. However, I do not recommend legal action. Does everyone understand that? Is there a second to the motion? I second it. You'll second that. All in favor say aye, please hold your hand up. Okay, for against, for the next course of action, no legal action. That's four to one, right? So Rooney made a motion to revise the audit, ask that the audit be revised, and that we do not pursue legal action. What was the count? What was the vote? Four to one. Okay. And notate it that that is for item 7-2 and 7-10 both. Correct. I'm going to go to citizens' comments. At this time, anyone will be allowed to speak on any matter for a length of time not to exceed three minutes. No council board discussion or action may take place on a matter until such matter has been placed on an agenda and posted in accordance with the law. Are there any citizens coming? Yes, ma'am. Identify yourself, please. I'm Sharon Ivey, and I live at 210 East Germany. And <clears throat> for those familiar with Lone Star, you'll know there's a 210 East Germany and a 210 West Germany. A few weeks ago, we had a grass fire and we called 911. No one showed up at all, ever. So thankfully, we were able to get the fire put out. But I guess my concern is, is there a way that we can get East Germany on the map or clear up the confusion so if there is a dire emergency, we can get emergency vehicles on East Germany? Of course, uh, and we go beyond East Germany to handle fires and calling choppers to get people out and, and you're you're on the map. Uh, I don't know why they didn't show up. Does anyone know anything about that? Okay. Tina does. I mentioned it to Tina. I think it's my sleep. She mentioned it, but that was the first I had heard of it. I didn't know that we were there was an issue as far as it was already done and over with. I didn't know about that. It's only an issue if it doesn't happen. I mean, right. if it was a house, yeah. that would have been a big that's, issue. That's, that's the first time I've ever yeah. heard of this happening. That's the well, exception, we, but we'll look into it and find out what occurred. Thank you. We even mentioned when we called 911 that it was we were right by Rocky Point. Mm -hmm. So we would have assumed that they would know, everybody would know where that was. Yes, ma'am, they know where you're at. Yeah, I'll check the call on for sure. Okay. We'll pursue it and find out. Thank you. Yes, sir. Pete Ryder, I'm over in Dogwood. Um, I'm absolutely just disgusted by this proposal for the uh, the new ordinance. I can't believe it was even brought up in such a manner. Um, you can't re-roof after a damage unless you update wiring and plumbing. The way it's written is if you get a permit, your home has to be fully brought up to code. So if I get hell damage on my roof, $10,000 roof. I now have to give the city $1,500 for nothing. And I have to bring my entire home up to code because my home was built in 68. So of course code changes. So the way this ordinance is written, 
I'm going to have to pay thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in brick walls out, redo wiring, all this stuff just to put a new roof on my house. This is garbage. Um, and the fact that why should the city get fifteen hundred dollars for me to re roof my house? That makes no sense. My house is 2,600 square foot. The roof is probably 3,000 square foot. When you count the pitch, and if I have to pay 50 cents a square foot, that's 3,000 or 1,500 dollars. Um, it's almost in, impossible to find a qualified contractor to, that's willing to come to Lone Star. And now you want them to have to stop by the city, get some assessment by some unqualified person to say, I'm going to call you a certified electrician or whatever. Then they have to pay $25 to then bill me that extra $25 when they come to my house, if I can find somebody to come out. Um, if I sell my home, I have to pay 75, and the person buying my home has to pay 75, why? This is ridiculous. People who rent their homes, I know I've got three minutes, I'm talking fast. If you're renting your home, you have to pay $50 every time somebody leaves or comes back. This is gonna harm the low income more than anybody else because now renters, the people who rent the homes, are going to be more discerning about who gets in the home because they don't want turnover because now they have to pay the city every time. Um, there's a fee. There's a, a fee if I put a pool in. What happens if I go and buy a ten dollar kiddie pool and I have to pay the city a hundred bucks so that my grandchild can splash around in the yard? That's ridiculous. Um, I think this ordinance is going to cause people to let their houses fall apart because nobody can afford to spend a thousand dollars to replace a window and give the city another hundred and twenty-five or hundred fifty or hundred bucks or whatever. It's just ridiculous. So people are just going to skip it. We're going to find a lot of people with roofs with blue tarps and bricks on them. Um, so I think this is just arrogant community. I think this ordinance needs to go in the trash where it belonged in the first place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And your name, sir? My name is uh, Mike Secta. I live on Dogwood. And I have the same issue with the ordinance about the, uh, the part of the work permit stuff. It says anything you spend more than $1,000, well, if you up current with Joe Flation, a couple of cans of paint is $1,000, right? So. I mean that amount needs to be like maybe three or four thousand to be realistic. You buy a couple two by fours and a couple sheets of drywall and some paint, you easily shot a grand in order to pull a permit. The other thing is you have to pay a twenty-five dollar fee or the contractor does if they're an HVAC, HVAC contractor or an electrician, but a plumber is exempt. Well what makes the plumber uh, special? Because he doesn't chew his fingernails? I mean, mm -hmm. this is ridiculous. <laughs> and then you got the, the, uh, on the commercial utility permit. So we're trying to get any company out of it. We don't want people to, to uh, repair or upgrade or do anything like that. And then the other one is the way your fees are. Okay, concrete slab, $75 on a, on a remodel. Well, you're already spending enough money on the slab and all that. Are you, you going to come out and inspect it and all that? Who do we have for inspectors? Do we have anybody that knows how to put rebar in correctly and knows what compaction is or how to do a compaction test or any of that? There's nobody here with the city who knows any of that stuff. I've worked in construction many years of my life. So, I mean, I understand what I'm doing. I know how to fix something correctly or paint something correctly and all that. But I don't need somebody to come out and tell me how to do it or don't even know what they're looking for. And I gotta pay a $75 fee. I mean, I think the city is really gone after something to try and tack on some extra money for us and those poor schmucks that are just trying to live on a fixed income and trying to fix their property. Right now I'm trying to uh, repaint the exterior of my house and yeah I just put a new roof on mine a, a, a month and a half ago so I would have had to come up with an extra $1,500 for the roof. See I'm saying this is uh, you know you're just going to drive us right out of town. This is stupid. We're trying to improve the place and, and fix it up not, you know, for the city to try and make money off of just us. This, this ain't working. This is the whole ordinance thing. Appreciate it, Senator. Uh, yes, sir, Jim, go ahead. Jim's live, see you. For almost 25 years, I have done everything I could to encourage people to move into this town and invest in this city. This ordinance would do the exact opposite. 
It will even cost me to stop doing any improvements on my property because all it's going to do is cost more money, even though it will benefit the city and bring more people in. It's to the point now that people start calling and asking if I was to move into the city or if you if you had a chance to move into the city, would you? If this ordinance passes, I will tell them absolutely not. It will not encourage businesses. It will not encourage rebuilds. And everything that we do on our property, we get taxed for. So if we don't do any of these remodels, if we don't do these things, you're not going to get anything because I can't afford to do them. And with the economy like it is right now, it's just going to get worse, not better. Plain and simple, this is the worst idea I've ever heard the city come up with. Yes, ma'am. Miranda Weldon. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to reiterate because we all feel the same that this is kind of crap. But all I see this doing is encouraging people to let things fall around them. That I mean, that's been the general consensus of everybody I've spoken to outside of it. That this is a way to put money in the city's pocket, obviously. But how does it come back to the community? We hear everybody up here saying, grow, grow, grow. But I don't see all that. I see it being shut down at every turn, growth in this city. Does. But I would like to also comment after this is spoken on, because I do have some questions about who might be the inspector and what we're talking salary-wise. So that's all I have to say. Can. Yes, my name is Teresita Forrest and I live in 321 Rockville Street. And what I'm looking here is something that is no sense to me. Last year I replaced my roof and it cost me around $7,000. And that I must still, I have to pay now to the city when I don't see the city do anything for Lone Star. Just bring shit, excuse me the word, but it's bringing just shit. Uh, why uh, nobody I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry that's why I'm apologize but what I see don't around here in Lone Star is comments. just drugs yes, it is. Don't do drugs it yes, it is. I'm not gonna do it again but it makes no sense to me with people who's working to keep their house that is a very old house in a good condition we have to pay the city and we have to bring people from out Lone Star to make the repairs. That's made no sense to me. And I don't see any good in Lone Star. If you go to the German street, where is Lone Star Stay Back, you can see the street right there. It's not fixed, and it's, when it's raining so bad, holes everywhere. Do you think it's fair? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay? Jim, go ahead, Jim. I just have one other thing to say. We've got a house down the street of ours that for the past 10 years should have been torn down. And there's neighbors have come everything that they can to come to the city to get that resolved. That's on the ordinances. If you can't enforce the ordinance that we existing that are existing on the books, then why add more stuff onto it? Because that house should have been torn down years ago. It's been brought up in front of this council multiple times and yet it still sits there. And there are rats, there are all kinds of things that live in that house because it is so demolished yeah. and so bad. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. This is the first I've heard of this, so I apologize. Okay. Lanita Goodwin, for the first time. What are the contractors gonna do? We have a tough enough time finding anybody to do any work around here anyway. And they're coming from everywhere and they, they charge us to come out and even give us an estimate. And then if we tell them, oh, you gotta go get a permit, and they yeah. say, oh, I gotta come during business hours and I gotta track somebody down to get mm -hmm. myself a permit, they're gonna go, no lady, I think I'll just pass on you. And I don't wanna drive to Lone Star anyway, so <laughs> I think I'll just pass on this. Anyone else? Or thank you for your comments. Okay. Or consent items. And it's a regular meeting, council meeting of December 15th, 2022. And it's a special meeting of December 19th, 2022. I haven't had time to look at them at all. Anyone else? Does anyone want to accept the consent item?
items, or do you want to table it until you have time to look at more? I'll make a motion to table it until next meeting. I have a motion to table it. Do you hear a second? I second. Don't a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Hold your hand up, please, because I couldn't see it. Okay. It's an item to the table. Five reports, five one. Here's five seven. A and B. Could you repeat that, what you said? Sir? Could you just repeat uh, what you said? I just referenced the reports in 5, five one through five seven. I also have not looked at these. I, I did attend the uh, Water District meeting. I've read that report. I did attend the EDC meeting. I've read that report. attended the uh, water district meeting and the general manager of the water district is here this evening as well as our representative of uh, on the water district one of the seven member cities and Sandy Wexler is our representative and uh, Wayne Owen is uh, the general manager they're here in the audience it's nice um, to attend. Um, I'd, I'd emailed uh, Sandy about a couple of things and she had pointed to uh, the three million dollars that the member cities originally invested in the mid '50s, uh, and I, I didn't quite understand where she was coming from. And then I read the exact same thing on their website, and uh, it's really interesting that the state legislature in 1955 passed a law that all these seven member cities plus uh, Mount Pleasant, Gilmer, Marshall, all could have joined. Also, they all voted it down. And so I've been looking at some numbers with that, and they, those cities that voted it down have grown by 70%. Uh, our population of the seven member cities has fallen by 11%. But that $3 million, that original investment, um, we probably paid another $3 million in interest. So the expense to us was $6 million, and it's about 14,000 people. In 1960, it was 14,896 people, and in 2020, it was 13,198. Um, that original investment, uh, just to adjust for inflation in today's dollars uh, would be um, the six million dollars so the interest plus the principal would be around 66 million dollars so that's what imagine these 14,000 people electing to take on that sort of debt in today's dollars if they had borrowed the three million and instead invested in uh, t-bills which is as conservative as you can get we'd be looking at a billion dollars and the reason I make this point is uh, I want to make sure that our city, make sure that our, represent, our representative understands, you know, like, that we consider it a return on investment. Because it was a significant investment that was made by my grandparents. And I want to make sure that we continue to honor that investment. Oh, and I had received an email from Mr. O that said he was happy to attend any city council meeting where he was requested. Okay. So, raise your hand if anybody didn't see you. There's Mr. O. Glad you're here. Uh, there won't be no comments made tonight because this is on the agenda. This is just a side note. But, uh, yeah, this, this report here. Uh, I make a motion we approve the water district board. I, I attended the meeting, I videoed it, I transcribed it, it's all there online. If, if, if y'all feel that way. Otherwise, I wouldn't have time. Huh? You're going to approve just the one report? Uh huh, that's what the motion was for. But that's really just me, so. So you're officially putting that as a motion? I did, yes. A motion to accept the water report. We hear a second. 
have a second from Mother Brown. All in favor say aye. 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 And y'all are not approving any of the other reports? Are you? They're still looking for the other Did the other reports, and I'll make a motion to approve the other reports as presented. I second. A motion to second to accept the 5 1 through 5 7. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Not voting. Okay. So we're going to have two motions on that. We're going to have Cody approving. The lower report only, and Mona seconded it. All eyes on that, and then Mona made a motion to approve 5-1 through 5-4. Then five, 5-4 five, through 5 seven, eight, eight. Yes. Yes. Non-action items, 6-1, Chief of Police, Stephen Bly, President Central Appreciation to Citizen Zachary miscommunications between the two rabbit holes, Mandy sent her stepson up there to go up there to protect her uh, rabbit hole, her business. They didn't know that he was coming up there. He pops the trunk when he gets out there and he has a rifle. Zachary, 20 years old, did not panic, seen the guy pull up with a rifle. He, uh, told everybody to remain calm and told everybody to get back to the restaurant. In the back of the restaurant, kept everybody calm and called 911 until we got there. We think that was an act of bravery, heroism, and man, Sam, you got a good kid here. <laughs> that is that. And say your job well done. <laughs> Action on fencing of the city owned right of way by private property owners and authorized the mayor to draft a letter to the property owners at 529 North Main Street, the auto man instructing them to remove the property fences and from city owned right of way table from previous meeting. If you wish, go back to the previous meeting. Could, could we actually take 714 first? It's, uh, it's, it's related, but it's essentially public comments that I would like to make, which I can't really make through public comments. I have to uh, do it through an agenda. You want to go 7-14? Uh -huh. They're very similar or un undistinguishable. Uh, so I'm basically, the reason I say it's separate is I'm speaking as a citizen and taxpayer. Uh, and I'm demanding that the city do its duty and enforce my, my right of access as a citizen and taxpayer to the public streets 
Um, and the statutes to specifically address uh, access to the city streets. So uh, the transportation code. Um, uh, chapter 311. General authority of a general law municipality. A general law municipality has exclusive control over the highway streets and alleys of the municipality. Okay, so then chapter 316 of the transportation code defines a municipal street. Um, the entire width of a way held by a municipality in fee or by easement or dedication. Now that particular piece of land is held in fee. It means the city owns it. It's not where, there's, there's certain streets, especially older streets in Lone Star or in general where you own to the bill of the street, but you have no right to say what happens there, essentially. Uh, the city has right of way, the city has uh, everything. Um, and you had mentioned right of way in regards to that property, but it's, the city doesn't have right of way, they have ownership. So the neighboring property owner, and it may be a different property owner now, the for sale signs have gone down, I don't know. Uh, that, uh, that piece of land that's about 12 feet by 40 feet is owned by the city. There are no taxes paid on it. There are taxes that are not paid on it, um, and so the city has not paid taxes because the city owns it. Um, so the roadway is defined in chapter three, six, section 316 um, as the portion of a municipal street that is uh, improved design or ordinarily used for vehicular travel. The term does not include a curb, berm, or shoulder. So that's between the curbs. The sidewalk means the portion of a municipal street between the curb lines or lateral lines of a roadway and the adjacent property lines that is improved and designed for or is ordinarily used for pedestrian travel. Um, they had a whole section, a whole part in that uh, chapter where it describes a situation where the private property owner does own to the middle of the street and that they can, you know, have a sidewalk cafe or make sort of improvements, but uh, to do that, it cannot block the public's right of access to cross it. Um, so section 316, or chapter 316, section 21, 316.021, uh, munis municipal permission to use a street or sidewalk for a private purpose. A, municip a municipality may permit and prescribe the consideration in terms of the use of a portion of a municipal street or sidewalk for a private purpose if the use does not, one, interfere with the public use of the street or sidewalk, or create a dangerous condition on the street or sidewalk. And so uh, the reason I cite those is to say that it's a duty of the city, not a discretion of the city, to maintain my right of access uh, to the sidewalk, to the full width of the street, as defined by the law. Okay. Uh, that was 714, essentially, and 71. Uh, is there a sidewalk there, sir? No. I just, I just, I just uh, read the law. Sidewalk is anywhere where pedestrians would normally and I'll make Good you us. correct it. It's not 714, it's 713. Okay, 713. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, you are very, what is that? Okay, 713. Yes, yeah. 713. Thank you. It's 713, not 714. I called when this first brought this to our attention. I called to email and I was asking about right of ways and versus what could be done. And they said if the city, if it's brought before council and council votes to approve it, they can give a private owner permission to do so. I started going back and looking at the records and I couldn't find it anywhere where it was approved. So I called two former mayors and uh, asked if they could shed some light on it and one of the mayors that I got a hold of said there was never, it was just something they allowed them to do. There was never a contract written on it. There was, it was never brought to city council for approval. There was no vote on it. And that's why it didn't show up in any minutes anymore. So, do you have the authority to make the move fence? Uh, one thing I want to point out yes. is, is you go to Google uh, Maps and you drop the little guy there. Mm -hmm. In 2013, the fence was not there blocking half. The fence was probably further onto their side uh, than the line. But in 2013, it was not there the way it is today. On the back half of it. Okay. So it's 
on the back part of the business and also on the side? Is that what you're saying? That's that's in the city right uh, away that's being taken? That's I believe the street is Woodcrest. Mm -hmm. oh, that's um, and the property line. I thought you were talking about where it runs up to the street. Uh, currently, it goes Woodcrest right up against the curb. Yes. In 2013, at about where the building is, it went to the back corner of the building and then over to the side. Okay. At, at least 12 feet. Okay. There was a fence there in 2013. It was not where it is today. So the but back it, of the building is also impeding pedestrians right away to walk? Is that what you're saying? I'm trying to understand the back. No, no, no. Just the property line, which is 12 feet from the curb. Just like they just surveyed on the other side of the curb. Do you walk down that street? If I want to. I can. It's fenced off. It says, it says I'll be... You can come on the other side, though, can't you? What, it's for sale, isn't it? Across the street. Walk across the The other side's for sale, so... Did <coughs> it have a sign? It has. So we're going to have to send our ordinance officer out there to take the measure to make sure that we're accurate on what the right of way is. Uh, I think I, I may have shared it at the first meeting, the pictures of the uh, the deed records and the plat and everything that shows, yes. and it matches the survey stakes that are on the other side. Uh, you know, we're not talking about inches here, we're talking about 12 feet by 40 feet. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not upset over inches. Uh, you know, you, it's at, up against the curb, you cannot walk on that side. I too had noted uh, the fence there for for a number of years and never really looked at it. When you brought it to my attention, uh, I drove up there and looked at it, and, and you're right, it does go right up to the curb, but there's no access to that area to go down the street on that side. Uh, so, Council, what you have is a, uh, again, we have no record no knowledge that it was ever voted on by council and approved and that would have had to have been done to allow them to put the fence up well we have five people i'll make a motion we'll see how the votes uh my, my understanding is uh i've visited with some of the principals involved and from what i was told another one of the issues where it was a more or less a gentleman's agreement they didn't come to the council. The, the mayor at that point in time, who it was, it's immaterial at this point, told them they it wouldn't going to be a problem for them to do that. And my understanding is, and I haven't talked to Ricky or Trent or anybody else, my understanding was when they put that up, first of all, the reason was uh, they had kids going down there hanging on the fence, and that, that was an, which that's just an issue. But the, when they put it up, my understanding is, and I could be wrong about this, we need to check into it, but I don't believe those posts, with the exception of the two end posts, are in concrete. That is correct. That's what I was doing. I, I think they're, and the, the reason it was done that way is because the owner at that point in time, which was Ricky Duke, said that if, it, if there was ever an issue where the city needed that property, that could be moved. Now, that's third party information, but as somebody who was involved with it at that point in time, uh, I don't know. Did Ricky have a legal agreement or any type of document? It was all issue? verbal. It was all verbal. Just yes, like a lot of things going around here a long time ago. Yeah. So, you know, it didn't, I don't think it ever went to council for a vote. I just think that it was, he came and talked to them, and they said, you know, it's not a problem, put up there. And he said, well, I'll do this, but if it ever, you know, if the if city needs that property for something, then, you know, that could be wrong. But that's what I was told. I don't mind, my, my understanding is, is that property for sale now also? It was. It is, still, still, is it is still for sale. I'm sorry? It is still for sale. Okay. So when we had the last big windstorm, the sign was blown down. Okay. So my question is this. 
if it's for sale, <coughs> why don't we make <coughs> the individual who owns it now put in the contract that when it's sold, that fence will be moved back like it should be? I mean, if it's for sale now, it's going to be a moot point if it's sold. You know, just move it right then, and that, that's part of the contract to take it over and do it that way. I mean, that, that's what I would think the uh, most simple thing to do would be. So, mm -hmm. I mean, because I don't see it, up until this point, it has not been a problem. I don't. I, nobody's brought it up to be a problem. Right. Now, I'm not questioning that it's in the right way. I'm not questioning. That. I'm just saying that if it's in the process of being sold, part of that sale should be that fence will be moved back. To where Correct. To That's my opinion. Correct. What do you do in a situation if a person's looking at buying it and thinking that that's part of They it? need to fix that. That should be adjusted in their contract. Have we had complaints? Have we had people call in and complain that they can't walk down that street? I, I don't know of any complaints that have been lost. Steve, what are you talking about? Steve, what are you has there been any complaints lodged on that? No. Anybody? People have talked to me about it. Here's a comment. Go ahead, sir. A fence going onto somebody else's property will fail title work. When he tries to sell the property, it's going to fail in titling. He won't be able to get title insurance unless it's a cash deal. He should move the fence before the sale even moves forward. That's the only right way to do it. Secondly, we have children who cross the main street, walk down to the park. We don't need them crossing the street there again, going down, crossing another street, going down, crossing back over to, to get to the park. That's just putting children in danger even more. The fence needs to be moved, and it needs to be moved now. I think the Cody brought my attention. I drove down the road. That was, to admit, I was somewhat dismayed that it and moved. Council member asked the if street. there was a complaint, and, and yes, there was. Cody Womack was speaking as a citizen today. That was a complaint. Okay. Let, me, let me rephrase that. Was there a formal complaint lodged with the police department or anybody else? What, what's a formal complaint with the police department? Getting in the week. Getting in the week. Yes, sir. Move the place up or not. It needs to be moved before sale anyway. So we won't have no problems later on. Okay. Thank you. 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 Everyone, and we'll issue a letter to auto man to move the fence. Discussion and possible action to adopt the revised City of Lone Star Holiday Policy table from previous meeting. So, may I ask a question? Yes, please. Since you jumped to 7 3, are we not going to address? We're going to take the action on 7 13 as the action on 7 1 so that it would be documented? Yes. to the holiday policy. I think there was some confusion with employees at, at the last uh, Christmas holiday about how holiday pay worked. The, what two and a half times pay means. So we need to make sure that that's very clear to all the employees. That's why this was totally rewritten. If it's possible to be made clear. Um, and that's why this is still in draft mode. The, the previous policy referred to things as two and a half times um, because of the holiday pay rate, which technically is correct. You get eight hours holiday pay and then one and a half times if you work. The confusion on that was if, if employees work, they thought they got the eight hour holiday pay plus whatever hours they work instead of getting, say if you work four hours, you got four hours holiday pay at 
time and a half, and then four hours of straight time. Right. They, it was a misunderstanding on the way it was written, you, and that was approved back in 19, so when this came about, that's why I completely redid it to where hopefully it's a little bit more clear. I don't reference anything as two and a half times, even though technically that's correct, but that kind of takes away the fact that you realize, okay, you get paid your holiday pay, and then if you work, you get one and a half times for the hours that you work. It, it pretty much works the same way everywhere. It's just a matter of the trouble of describing it. Right. Well, the time she had it identified too, and just I looked into it. It went several years back. That, and it's I believe it's an accounting issue is the reason why they don't <coughs> trade. So if you've got an employee that works, you either have an employee, a person that doesn't work, they get eight hours holiday pay. If they work, they have a column on their timesheet that they filled out at two and a half times. And that would allow them to get that two and a half times in one keystroke, uh, one stroke of the pen, and then have to fill it out in two different places. But that's, if you don't work the full eight hours, then you have to identify your hours that you did work, and then your holiday pay. And that's where the confusion was. And with that, and that's the reason why I, Retype this. I researched other people's other policies that other people had to see what the flow of everybody else's and took the two and a half times out completely. Hopefully, to clarify it more. On Christmas, did we have to call Calvin out? He got called, yes, uh, during the freeze that we had. I told them, I gave them authorization to call him out if they ran into an issue, and we did. Yeah. I had heard that. I didn't know if it was true or not. Mm -hmm. That's rarely done, but I'll be at the Shane wasn't here available, and Calvin's got more knowledge of where all the lines run in the city than anyone. And they did have two or three instances where they were digging up lines, replacing them, and as a result of that work, no one ever sent me the full water notice and we did not end up expending an exorbitant amount of money on water that was just free flowing, running down the road. So it was well worth our time. Because, I mean, contract labor though, we're getting just only needed. So even if Correct. you're paying a lot. Correct. It's the exception, not the rule. How much did we have to pay him? Do we pay him hourly or what? It's hourly. $60 an hour, I think. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $50. $
to ensure that we have coverage or whatever to fix whatever problems we may incur ha encounter that would be the council's choice to proceed that way it does not apply to the sick time but it would apply if that's yeah. if the council wants to do that. Uh, and, and, and my only thought that's a good point my, my thought process on that is <coughs> our employees don't make a lot of money now. I mean it's because of the situation to ensure that they're willing to come out in a situation like what we would just identify. I would think it's not going to mean that much difference in money. We would go ahead and tell them, yeah, we'll give you your overtime, time and a half, not double time, time and a half, if you have to come out on Saturday and work. I think that's only, that's to me, that's an incentive for keeping your people. Yeah. That's and why with, presenting yeah, that and with the minimal know. amount, or I'm not going to say minimal, well, I guess I can. With the minimal amount that we have to pay at this point in time, I think that's just another incentive to give them a reason to stick around or a reason to say, yeah, I'll be glad to come out there. That just, I think we need to change it and make it, make it that. So do you want to say that you want to add some verbiage to the overtime calculation? Yes. What verbiage would you like to add? Um, and that being... That, that being covered by the council and not by law. That would be something the city would be taking up on themselves as doing that to, to not disqualify, you know, to, to ensure we have coverage. I'm not sure about how the, the technical wording needs to go. Uh, I think it just needs to say something about that if you're, if it, if the, uh, if an emergency situation. If, yeah, if an si emergency situation occurs where you have to be called out, then we will pay you time and a half not an additional time and a half, but time and a half for the hour you work. Because all we're paying them, actually we're gonna pay them their regular pay anyway. So all we're looking at is half time pay extra. Right? How about pay? Sure. Time and a half. Yeah, That's well, all but right now they're getting full time, straight time. Yeah. So it would just be 0.5, yeah, yeah another half, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. I, I think it is difficult to describe to yeah. people. Call out pay. Well, and as it is now, in. because of going by the law, the guys are like, you know, well, we did this here or we've done that there. Am I going to be penalized for this? I'm, I'm going by what the law says because I went back and looked at what some of the other records were. Um, and there were some inconsistencies, all I'm going to say about that, from different times to the other. And I, I think for us to have coverage, then we need to take care of the guys. But I couldn't legally do that until y'all decided I could do that. I'm not sure about how the verbiage needs to be put in there. Other than what you're saying, time and a half, if you're called out, time and a half. Go from there. Cut off the last, time I, last time I had like the three options. And I didn't really understand that. I don't really exactly understand this either. But are we talking about rewriting it again? or? I was going to make, if, if you guys want to change anything, speak up now, I'll mark it up and we'll change it and I'll present it again. Or I can email it to you guys. I mean, we'll know it has to come to a meeting. But, um, re re what Rudy just said. Well, all I've got down is if an emergency situation occurs, then call out time will be paid at, at one and a half times hours work. I, I tried to watch YouTube videos on this to sort of understand the language and everything, and I didn't really understand it that well. I've gone through FSLA. I, I mean, I've gone through uh, looking at the FSLA. I've gone through the Department of Labor. I've actually even contacted the Department of Labor on some things. What they reiterated to me was if an employee does not physically work 40 hours, then no overtime is due to that employee. That is what the DOL says. Also, if an employee, and with the holiday pay, it states that a business does not have to pay overtime on it. I mean, the bottom line, if you physically don't work 40 hours, you do not have to pay overtime legally. If the council chooses to do this, then they can do so as long as we're documenting it, and then I will make whatever necessary changes on whatever paperwork, whether it be timesheets or whatever. Uh, that way we are all on the same page where, there's, where it's clear instead of money. Yeah, there had been some confusion. People thought they got three and a half times paid. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, though. Somebody come out on that time, just take, taking the person that worked the hourly job, whether I worked 40 hours or not, 
if I get called out, it's time and a half. What I was working for, I was, and that that's the incentive for me to answer that phone and go. Well, and that's some of the things that me and the guys have talked about. But like I said, legally, we didn't have to do sure. that. Can, so that's where y'all have to do it. May I ask him, what about what about the guy that has to be at the sewer plant every day? Even on Saturday and Sunday, and that's required by the state. Would that fall under that? You talking about it falling? Is he under required to be there full time every day? You he talking about to, on the time whenever they have holiday week? Too? Yes, ma'am. Because I think the way Mr. Rudy explained was in it, it was an emergency, yeah. but you know it's mandated by the state. So right. They go down there. You know, even on Saturday and Sunday, no matter if it's a holiday or not. Yeah, it's, emergency is a term we use, but Tony said it right. If they get called out, if it's a call out, something has to happen, then it's time. This ain't a call out. This is not a call out. Well, I know. It's scheduled time. It's due. But is, is, it a, is it in addition to what we're talking about? I mean, I don't, it, I don't, technically it is. I don't have a problem to them time and a half to go out there like that. I mean, well, it what, what seven it, days a week. What it is is they'll come in, you know, the guys are on call, uh -huh. they'll come out two hours. They get paid two hours, whether right. they work two hours or whether they work 15 minutes. Right. They get paid two hours. That's their call out time. Okay. okay. So they're going to get paid those two hours on the Saturday and on the Sunday. Then Monday they come back to work. Sometimes we have holidays on Monday. Well, then if they are off and let them get called <coughs> out, they typically wouldn't earn overtime because they didn't physically work 40 hours by law. Okay. So, yeah, they get okay. off. We're not talking about a tremendous sure. amount of money. We're going to be taking care of our people. It's a little, little, little kid do this. So you're going to do it at call out time, uh, at the emergency situation occurs, call out time be paid, and also on uh, on call pay. I believe that. <coughs> that's what I would do. Yeah, it's, to me, that's ethically unfair. What needs to happen? That's, and like I say, we're not talking about. That's why we're bringing this up so that it can be documented. So yes. that because it was not documented, it, and what was documented was very confusing, which is the, the sample y'all got the last time. That was the signed document from 2019. Sure. All I did was change the ownership from the city secretary only approving this stuff to where it included the city secretary, the mayor, and the department supervisors. Well, and, and this is another deal where we're trying to start updating everything and there's going to be some pain with all that, either positive or negative. This is a good thing. So we're going to redraft this and in the next meeting we will... I can't. If, do y'all see anything else that you want to change? Um, the, the other one did not make reference to, example, the non-scheduled religious holidays. Uh, some of the samples that I researched, that, that was something out there, and it's, it's applicable to anybody. Um, the eligibility, <coughs> the FMLA leave, uh, and the first page is pretty much the same as um, the previous one. It's just duplicated. Um, so that everybody will understand my thought process, because there was a question on this, and trying to address this issue, there was a situation. There was something mentioned about Columbus Day, and you and I, Cody, talked about the floating holidays being grouped, uh, grouped together around Christmas, uh, so that they could have more days off. If, if the Columbus holiday fell, uh, you asked me about that at the office one day. That statement, I did find what you were asking and talk about on that. That was removed because. My personal opinion on this, to the citizens of Lone Star, if the city offices are not open for five days, that's an injustice to the citizens. But if you're going in and you're off on a Friday and a Monday, that's just two days. Not including Thursday, Friday, or whatever, and then Monday and Tuesday. Because the citizens, there's going to be some of them that can't get up here and do things on <coughs> other days that, you know, when you're physically there. So that little statement was taken out of the previous one and I did not put it in here. Therefore, these baseline holidays is what's going to be consistent each year with the exception of Columbus Day. And it's going to be kind of like a floating holiday because there's 
people that want Martin Luther King Day off, there's people that want Veterans Day off, and since the, we only get 10 holidays, the other ones are in alignment with the federal law. Uh, but Columbus Day was one of the of the floater. And so we'll end up having, people can have off one year of Martin Luther King Day, they can have off one year of Veterans Day, and the next time they can have Columbus Day to rotate it out to be fair. So, okay. So you're just saying Columbus Day is going to be your it's going to be kind optional float on Columbus Day can because be. Because I was going to say, if nothing else, <coughs> pardon me, if nothing else, every other year you give, the, at the, before the beginning of the year, you give the employees the option of what holiday you want to observe this year that we, you know, you're floating. That's, that's why Martin Luther King was put on here right. this year as a schedule, because okay. it was referenced last okay. year that they wanted it. And I made a notation on it, and that's why it was actually on the schedule this year. Now, what about the, uh, and, on the and Tony just brought this to my attention, <clears throat> on the paragraph four, it's bolded. A person is not scheduled to work on a city recognized holiday or called out, the employee will not be paid for that day. What does that mean? They're going to be a paid. Person, uh, if a person is not scheduled to work on a city recognized holiday or called out for an emergency, uh, if an employee comes out on the city holiday and works and they weren't authorized to, to work, they don't get, that's the same statement from the old one. Oh, because what's was. happened is you get paid two and a half times your rate. If you don't have relevance to come out and work, this is this is nothing different from the previous. But why month. would they come out and work if there's no relevance for them to work? That makes no sense. <laughs> I'm not coming out working for nothing. They want to go two and a half times. They want two and a half times instead of getting the holiday pay. That's the point. I mean, this was in the previous procedure. If you want it taken out, Rudy, I'll no, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm more clarity is all I'm wanting yeah. to call Yeah, because I, I was looking at that. I mean, if you want it, I mean, this is the exact same verbiage. If y'all want to change the verbiage, I'll change the verbiage. What would y'all like to say? Because you said it's an unauthorized person. Yes. Correct? Because I was looking for that verbiage. So you, uh, I'm sorry. Again, this is from before. I'll change the verbiage. What do you want to say? Yeah, yeah I mean, because you're talking about it. Uh, unauthorized. Yeah, I, my deal work. is unauthorized to me means somebody that's not supposed to work on these to come out for Yes. On their own. Correct. That, and, and I could be wrong. That's just because interpretation. We, because if we did with that statement right there, I would call out that we just said, we just bought it that with that statement right there. Now, if a person is not scheduled to work, they're scheduled people, PD scheduled, uh, water and sewer guys, if they're, if they're scheduled that day, they're going to come out and work, and they're going to get paid two and a half times. But if they're not scheduled to work on a city-recognized holiday, or if they're not physically called out to work because of an emergency situation, the employee will not be paid. That's not difficult to me to understand, but if there's, an, I mean, like I said, it was the way it was worded. I left it in there because it was previously approved. If y'all want to change it, let's change it. I mean, we can let's change this. it. What do y'all want to say? Too many questions about it. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, because. I mean, just, just reading that might be, as an employee, I, it was confusing. What would you like for it to say, Tony? Um, like I said, you, I mean, the without, on schedule. Without being called out by a supervisor? Or? Yeah. I mean, say if, if I was hourly, which I'm not, and I come out and work on a holiday so that I can milk the city for two and a half times because I can that would be wrong to the citizens of the city to me to milk that for two and a half times when I can wait until the next day to do it. Um, especially if I don't have my supervisor's approval to do that, and I did it by law, my supervisor's got to pay me now because I came and I worked, even though he didn't approve it. So that's what they're trying to say here. What was said previously was if a person is not scheduled to work, being like a PD or somebody, um, or called out for mercy, they will not be paid. What wording do y'all want on it? Non scheduled work on a city record of how they are calling out for an emergency and for them not be paid for that day. Same way. It's pretty much the same way. I'm only a different person, not scheduled. Say non that again, please. Non scheduled work. I mean, I'm just trying to. 
clarify the verbs right here. Non scheduled work on a city recognized holiday or called out for an emergency. The employee will not pay for that day. But that's pending approval of the city secretary, the mayor, or their supervisor, i.e., 3 o'clock in the morning. But it's, that's the amount of state, but that's y'all. That's a call out. Yes. But it's approved. Correct. And it's not stiff. Correct. Is this basically what it says right there? It, it is. is. And, 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 just, I mean, that's what it says. <laughs> that's, that's what it says. I'm just saying, look, looking at the verb, just, just it's grab just, it. Right I mean, there. it's exactly what it says. Yeah. Non scheduled work. I'm okay. fine. Leave it like it is. It's, leave it. It's what it says. Yeah, leave it like it is. I mean, I thought you, I could just look at it and say, okay, well. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. It's for you citizens who got the uh, uh, the city document, a copy of the city document, if you took exception to, always know that when those things are issued and they come to the table, it's only a baseline. It doesn't mean it's going to be approved. It just means it gives us something to talk about, to tweak, and accept, yeah. or reject. Well, that's why we're here in case you didn't. <laughs> you read it, but you, when somebody presents it to you, it has to go out on the meeting minutes for them to look at and approve or disapprove <laughs> or rewrite. You have to start from somewhere. This is a very bad starting point. When we get to that item on the agenda. Okay. <laughs> go on. So we're going to table this again. Uh -huh. <coughs> and and y'all want to change? What can we change to be on the call out? We could all we could email any suggestions we had, and then that would be greatly <coughs> appreciated. And then maybe next meeting, uh, you know. I mean, because this this horse has been ridden. Um, he didn't have any legs left. Okay. We could email any suggestions, and then they, they would be <laughs> in the next uh, draft. I'll make a motion. We table this, and everybody send their comments to team on the changes, and then we bring it up and vote on the next meeting. I second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thanks. <laughs> this horse has no legs. 7-4. Review discussion of follow-up action by the council to call the city general election on May 6, 2023 by adoption of the Board of election to elect the mayor and two aldermen to fill the expiring terms of Randy Hodges, Mona Brown, and Rudy Bedford. I may not be alive. <laughs> it's, uh, this is something that we do every year. Uh, it's just a formality. Okay, I want to have a motion. I'd like a motion. We call a general election on May 26, 2023. I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Before y'all leave out, I need y'all to sign this document about stating that y'all are approving that. Okay, so Rudy made a motion, and Ms. Jerry, you second it? Discussion possible actions on installation and removal of Christmas lights, payment for services rendered, and management of roadway traffic in accordance with state DOT guidelines. See the comment on this. That's a reading deal from the ABC meeting. Okay. Uh, <coughs> we had somebody approach the EDC and ask us if we were going to pay for the Christmas lights up this last year. I told them the EDC couldn't pay for that. So uh, we had two individuals, the mayor and Mitch Cox, step up to give us money to pay to get the Christmas lights back. <coughs> um, during the installation, it was noted last year and this year that there are some issues on some of the poles that need for the electricity needs to be fixed, and it's a buoy cast thing to come out and fix it. Well, 
what needs to happen is somebody, some organization, something needs to take this on as a project because next year uh, we need to have need the money set aside so they can go ahead and, and get those locks up. Uh, it, 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 the money's not going to come from the EDC, I, and we don't have another organization. I don't know who's going to do that. In conjunction with that, uh, this year when he was, Mr. Montana was taking the locks down, um, normally what happens is we have a police vehicle uh, out there behind them uh, with the lights on to notify traffic that there's something going on and go along. Well, I don't know what happened. I felt to. I don't have a clue. All I know is Mr. Montana called me on the phone and told me that that uh, I guess the gentleman who was helping him uh, was following his bucket truck with the lights on. When they got a full load, he brought the lights up here to put them away. Mr. Montana continued to work and got stopped. I guess one of the DOT got stopped him and asked him all kinds of questions on permits and you know how long you've been doing this for the city and so on and so forth. So whoever takes this project on needs to be aware of that. They need to work on that because you have to go through the state DOT guidelines to get approval. There has to be a permit. Uh, there has to be a time frame established. Uh, there has to be a vehicle following or behind the uh, vehicle that's the truck that's putting up the lights. All that will have to be taken care of prior to. And then the same thing when they're taken down. Okay. To keep in guidance with the DOT. Uh, I guess, I don't know, maybe you can address this, because I don't know, for years, I guess, nobody's ever known that existed. Well, we do yeah, now. Yeah, we know. Yeah, and the, 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 I guess the DOT inspector or whoever it was who stopped was very, you know, he understood. He wasn't going to give a ticket. He wasn't going to go to death. He said, just need to get it correct. So, uh, we thought we'd bring it to the council and let you know that that needs to be taken care of and so you can find somebody to take care of it and do the proper guidelines and all that stuff prior to Christmas coming up. That's all, that's all it was. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Really no, there's no action on it other than you want to, you know, because I'm saying, well, the only action would be you're going to find somebody. You said we need to have permits. Where do we get those permits from? I would assume you get them through. I, 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 they didn't tell me, but I haven't done research on it since then. I can look it up, but I'm assuming from the state DOT, you know, or DPS or whoever, you call them and find out who you need to get from. We, sh we should learn how much the ticket is as well. Do what? We get a ticket. But if we do get a ticket, they, they said they didn't give them a ticket, but. Yeah, he could have, but he didn't. He just. It'd be nice to know how much the ticket. Yeah, he is. understood. We're gonna go this time. Just don't let it happen. I'm not getting a warning. I guess a warning from a police officer. You know, Same. Like we have a comment, sir. I have a comment. Go ahead. We bleed money every year, time and money, in the Christmas lights. Let's just stop hanging them up and put that money into fixing our roads. They've got potholes everywhere. Noted. So we'll put the pursue DOT guidelines and make we have the correct ones for. Yep. No action required. 7-6, review discussion possible action to replace a six-year-old municipal court computer that is having serious issues supporting the upgraded court software. I'd like to comment on this. I came down this morning and I, I, I suggested uh, or offered to look at the computer because I was curious what the incompatibilities were, uh, whether it's an operating system thing or it's too slow or, or whatever. Anyways, then I looked in this uh, packet, <clears throat> in this $820 computer, 
um, from Absolute Technology Solutions. I can't tell for certain, but I'm fairly certain that that is a, uh, I think it's a $600 computer from Best Buy or b &H Photo. I can't say for sure. Uh, it's a Dell computer? Yeah. I don't know if it's the Optiplex 3000. I think it's the Optiplex 3000. It doesn't say. It has the uh, Blade memory, 256 gigabytes of RAM. And I believe they would charge to drive it over here from Longview, right? And set it up. Are you talking about absolute charging? Uh huh. Longview? Um, like $75 an hour or something like that. Hunter's got to install the OpenGov system on it, and um, if I understand correctly, the problems that they're having with the system is it's, it's the one that they have now is a crashing, is when you're talking about the old one. Um, when he looked into it, he was trying to get a compatible not necessarily the state of the art computer. He didn't go with a high, a terabyte of memory or anything like that. But he was trying to get something that would be feasible and workable uh, and last for several years. Um, as far as on it being him driving here and then try. I, I this wanna, is strictly for the purchase of the computer, and this would come out of court funds on the technology. Yeah, system. I want to make sure though that we're not paying eight hundred dollars for a six hundred dollar computer, which it appears to me we are. Because we could get one with try twice the RAM, you know, for that much. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not satisfied with this. That that's not what's happening. Well, the computer, we, we have to do something really quickly because the computer is crashing. Yeah, uh, B and H Photo uh, had the Optiplex 3000 with. Um, all the same specs. I think that this is an Optiplex 3000 uh, for $589 free next day shipping. So you would have it the next day at $589. But if you're going to spend $800, i would rather have a faster computer. Uh, I wanted to look at that one. There were, there were two computers at, at Kimbo's recently that were IMAX. One of them was 15 years old probably and it was faster than the one that was five years old. It, the five-year one had always been slow. And for whatever reason, they put this slow hard drive in it. I replaced it with a SSD, which is what's mentioned here, for $50. You know, now it's great. But I kind of wanted to look at it and see what the incompat incompatibility was. Uh, this says Windows Pro 10, I think, probably is what comes on it. Um, anyways, and I've also seen statements by Hunter where he was uh, making negative comments towards citizens in regards to their questioning the way that tax funds are spent. So I, I, have, a, I have already a, a negative impression there. Does, does that relevant, is that got relevance to the computer being replaced? Yes, it does. If we're paying 800 for a $600 computer. It depends on which version is off the plex 5,000 you buy. Yeah. Some, some number 848, some number 609. Yep. So. Well, that's inclusive of a three-year warranty. What does that, what does I mean, I know the warranties. Mm -hmm. You can pay a couple hundred dollars for a warranty. I did not detail it out because we asked them to look at it because they're going to be the ones that's working on it to replace it, hopefully before it crashes. Is this one a $609 one head if I go? Let's see. With a one-year purchase, I mean, a protection agreement and everything, manufacturer's warranty included, one year, $609.97 uh, for a three-year protection plan. It is $720-something. So you're talking about he's charging you probably $100 to bring it out to set it up. I mean, I'm just, you know. If there's no, I mean, he doesn't identify, I'm, I'm a, making a guess that the $820 includes labor and everything else. So probably a $700 computer plus the $120 kind of that's my guess. I can't tell from this description. What? I can't tell from the description whether that includes yeah, labor. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really say. Or exactly. It gives you an option out here to click on the 
manufactured warranty and for a three year warranty that cost you hundred and ten dollars extra. So I also can't, the price of computers plus that. I can't tell exactly which computer that is. I mean that's really I don't know what you're saying, but that's really not a bad price for a computer. Depending on you know, I don't like the fact that it only has eight meg eight gigabyte of RAM, two hundred and fifty six gigabyte for eight hundred dollars, you can definitely get one with sixteen or thirty-two gigabytes of RAM. So. I bet, man, I, you know, I don't know. It, it, it feels like a government contractor type price to me. I can't say for sure though, because well, technically we didn't have to put this on the agenda tonight, but because I wanted to make sure everything, uh, because of this being done for the court. It doesn't technically have to be identified on the agenda, but because I wanted it to be identified so that we could have it recorded in the system and not be one of these things that's yeah. happened in the past is the so, only reason why. Well, is. well, I'm glad we did. Yeah. Well, would it be who us then? I think to get with uh, whoever court, corner or whatever, get with them on that side of it and talk to them, or are you going to order for them? Or how's it going to be done to see if maybe there's a a better model per se? that we could buy and then get Hunter to come and set it up? I, mean, I don't know what that, if that's an option we can check out and see if we can buy the computer at a decent cost and then what he's going to charge to set it up. That's my opinion. And you said he had to set up the program? Install the program. On, uh, it's either installed actually on the CPU or it's going to be installed on the server and then connected that way. Uh, it's not a, it's a proprietary program. It's open go. But it's not his proprietary. It's with OpenGov. It's an OpenGov program. He's not affiliated with OpenGov. No, he's not. This is a new program that replaced. Um, they bought out the previous programmers. OpenGov did. They're, they're doing that nationally. Uh, any individual programs that are run through most municipalities, if they if they use this. One particular system they bought that out. I can't say the name of it. I didn't realize we were going to go down this path. But. Mm -hmm. We'll have a conversation with Hunter tomorrow. You want to table this? Yes, yes please. Wait a minute. Right. I make wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something else. Go ahead. Because of the conversation you and I had, mm -hmm. the trigger has been pulled on this to get the computer in here. I'm saying this is brought up here to be identified on it, to be reported, because the system is going down, and you told me to go ahead and get it done. Yeah. Okay. So have you already had ordered it? Yeah. We've, asked, we've asked them to order it yesterday because she has, well, that's one, we, oh, exactly. her system nearly went down yesterday. Yeah. So like I said, it's being reported. Mm -hmm. This was initially when the minutes were put out, when this was put out last Friday, we were we had not pulled the trigger. But because the system nearly going down yesterday, uh, her, she couldn't even print receipts out, I was told to go ahead and tell them to pull the trigger and get it ordered. So it's being documented as far as on what was being done. You can always cancel the order if you want to pursue that, but you are liable that you're going to have a system that goes down. That you well, I'm saying if you. If you're in an emergency situation where you don't have a system and you gotta have one, then it's a moot point. You already know that. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. We have a public comment. So I need where to what, what I'm hearing kind of in all of this, though, is that maybe there's some mistrust in the is that a possibility? Like they don't listen to other people? Because I was here when the club came in for the servers and that was extremely high. I don't think we have an issue with our ID company. It's been very, uh, very proactive for us. I think the cost, cost issues have been discussed. Is it cost effective or are they gouging? I think that was what I was hearing. That's the way I took it. Possibly there might be some, some gouging in the process.
from what I understand in comparison, when y'all accepted the contract with this particular business versus some of the other ones, there was their their prices were significantly cheaper. But that was before my time. Um, but the per hour problem. cost, I mean, I'm saying equipment cost seems oh, to be excessive in some instances from some of the meetings that I've sat through. Yeah. I know I sat through the meeting where they were going to replace the servers, and I tried to speak in to tell y'all that my husband can get the same thing through Dell for a third of what they were charging on. But nobody wanted to hear that. I'm a, I'm a believer in going direct to them, but the thing about it is, is that if it's an emergency situation, you know what I mean? It's a different... Well, the server deal would have point. also inclusive of downloading all the stuff that we had on the existing server and, and cropping it up, uh, basically cropping it up to where there was a dual service and because of their... What is it? They're recording well, the, the, the things that their camera downloaded. It was crashing. There may be some specific software that has to be, but I know Dell offers, because I just bought one, a new one. Dell offers a migration plan. When you buy a new computer, all you got to do is call them up, and they will take care of it for you to migrate out everything you have on your current computer to your new computer. So just an option for future reference. That's something we need to look into if we have to buy a different computer for each other. I'm in a position of no confidence with, with Hunter, and as far as it being proprietary, Microsoft is proprietary and everything's proprietary, and he obviously doesn't, he's not such a big company that he's doing, uh, what was the name of it? OpenGov, what did you say it was? OpenGov is the, it's a government owned company, it's not a private company. Yeah. It's a national company from what I understand. They bought out the previous municipal court system. OpenGov bought it out. Therefore, if you had the previous system, you either take you took it on, or you found another court system. I, uh, I I don't know about the nature of the emergency, but like I said, I wasn't confident that it was an eight hundred dollar computer for eight hundred because it wasn't explicit in the description. Well, when it takes 15 minutes to print a receipt because the computer's not wanting to run, mm -hmm. and I watched the, the processor today, watched the different uh, usages of the, the CPU usage and stuff like that, it completely filled the disk up 100% to where it went redlined and it was fixing to crash out. I wanted to look at it this morning because computers don't really age, you know? Not in a normal circumstance. Should we go forward? They'll come out dated, but they don't necessarily age. we got to do something one way or the other. I've got well, to contact the center. I don't I've think it's an item you vote on. Yeah. You've already said it's done. You just do it. But well, you can always contact Hunter and tell him to cancel it until you look at something else, but you're still at risk well, that your system is going to crash. It, my question is this. Does canceling it and taking the time to find something else to get it in here and then get it set up, is it worth the risk? Uh, something going wrong before we get that done. That's my. I don't think take. so. Well, if, it, if yeah. there's more risk in, in loss of data and it going down with us delaying and trying to get something different, it would cost us more if that happened than what we're doing now. So for it, this particular instance, they're doing this. I was like, go ahead and do it. And then we just need to be real frugal next time and say, kind of look ahead or when we start having some type of issue, if, you if, know, look at it that way. If this is an Optiplex 3000, we could have one by Monday for $589, including shipping. I think it's an Optiplex 3000, but I can't tell for sure. I was going by what you know, I said 5000 on it, that's why I was looking Maybe. Uh, it's a different you know. font. I don't know if that's a... Uh, right, correct. I agree. I would ask him, is it an Optiplex 3000? If he says no, I'd say cancel it. I'm sorry, if he says yes, I'd say cancel it. When is it supposed to be delivered? Then the next. 
Well, I'm looking right here on the line for a Dell OfficePlex 5000 desktop at Best Buy's $1,099.99. We don't know that it's a 5000 It depends on which one you look at. I think it's a 3000 Well, the 5000 that's identified on this pet man we're riding this horse. That's what do you guys want to do? Just, just, just make a motion on well, one way or the other. Well, the one that's, that's been, that we've pulled the trigger on, when is it to be to do? Big question, because when does he have time to? Is it going to be delivered? Like, it's an emergency, but is he not going to be here until next Friday? I just sent him the email yesterday off the conversation that Randy and I had, so therefore it was ordered more than likely just yesterday. Um, but he was waiting for me to order. He asked me to wait. Uh, he, told, he said, if you, the longer you wait, the longer you're going to have to wait for it to come in um, and for us to have to work it in their schedule to get it delivered. So that's why they were trying to get it delivered to where they could get it worked up here and get it replaced before that system crashed. So we don't have a date. I don't have an actual date. Now. I would call we him in the morning. We just ordered it yesterday, or I gave approval yesterday. I would call him in the morning, ask if it's an Octoplex uh, 3000. If it is, I would cancel it and order it, and we'd have it by Monday. We'll do that. We'll do that. Would you be willing to go up there and help them order it if they want it? Yeah. Because you have the information. Yeah. Okay. And you can get, and you can get your hands on one. Uh -huh. uh, what do you mean? You can get your hands on one. Monday. 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 Yeah. Free delivery Monday. Monday. Tina's got another comment tonight. The only problem with that is when we tell our IT people to order something, they order it when we tell them to get it done because of this emergency situation. If we start going and start canceling stuff like this, when they've already put the order in, it's gonna cause a cost to possibly be incurred that we're gonna pay for for nothing. And he researched the systems to, find, to try to find it. I questioned him on the eight gig and 256. But he says, you don't need that much more because of the system, of uh, some other things with the system. He says, you don't need a big honking hard drive and stuff like that to run the, system, the program. Um, we're going to continue on and fiddle around with the fact of if it's a 3,000 or if it's a 5,000, you're going to postpone it to where it's going to be another day or two to get here. If it can be here by Monday or whatever, then uh, that, because that, I don't know that he could have it here tomorrow. I have no idea. Right. We don't know when he's going to work If he in. didn't order it to yesterday, he may have it tomorrow, and then he may not. If it's an Octoplex 3000, it's a 40% markup versus getting it from B&H. What does that do with our contract? Well, I would say if I, if I, I, I'm talking about ordering something and then canceling it, is that what you're saying? Yeah, this is what we have with it. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't know. I don't know that I would trust to accept an order from us in writing if, if we're going to go and turn and cancel it. I wouldn't. If I stuck out, if I would, you told me to order Let something. Let me suggest something. I'll take the fall for this. I did tell her to go ahead and order because it was beginning to fail. I felt like that was unacceptable not knowing if we could get a better deal or not, but we had to act on it. Mm -hmm. The same type of actions you take when you get a call at 3 a.m. in the morning, you've got a six inch line blowing out and perfect to lose water pressure. You make a response on it very quickly. I don't have the time, I don't have time for six month study. Well, I trust Hunter's opinion on the fact and that we can go ahead and pursue it and look at it and see if there's a variance of price where we could have gotten a, a better deal. And you can scold me for that, but something had to be done. Okay. Seven dash seven. Are you going to vote on it at all or not? It's been done. What would we vote on? <laughs> So what are we going to do? We're going to order We're just going to go ahead with it. Okay. Do you have a motion? Yes. Yeah. We did an action, but we're not going to go to an action. It's not yeah, we did an action because of the situation. We ordered it. It wasn't ordered Friday when I put this on the agenda. It was ordered yesterday. So 
we have an action that we had to take. Okay. So, but we don't have to vote on anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's already done. You said it wasn't required to be in front of the council. It so wasn't, but I just so said that y'all are aware that this is a no action. Okay. No action. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Seven dash seven. I have an initial question about this. Uh, who wrote this? Who wrote what? The ordinance. The ordinance. Actually, uh, that ordinance is number 63 that was written years ago. And all it was was copied over and updated, combined with um, it was appealing some of the other ordinances. Uh, let me get to the actual ordinance itself. When you say it was updated, how was it updated? The fees in it. So the amount. Because we have dollar a dollar here, two dollars there. So the amount. I checked with the uh, some of the contractors around here. I checked with our electric. Uh, electrical inspection guy, uh, Mr. Bush, and he told me that if we were ever, we were talking about ordinances and the fees and stuff, he says, if y'all are ever gonna update the ordinance on as far as on anything electrical, you need to calculate it on 50 cents a square foot per house. And he said, that is standard for everybody. That's what Dangerfield does, and that is a standard protocol. Now that's what he said, because that's what his profession is. I'm not an electrical inspector, I don't know, but that's what he suggested that we do, and that's why this had 50 cents. I did not change the ordinance. Kyle researched this and pulled in um, the items on <coughs> I, I spoke with Kyle today. I had somebody call me with a question on, on this ordinance. And I told him, I don't know, call, I'll give him a call. So I called him because he's done that county answering the phone, and I said, just tell me where did this come from? He said, the fees that are in this ordinance came from a town that is smaller than our town, and he mirrored them, and that town was Lone Oak. So if you go look at Lone Oak's ordinance, just like this, these fees match what? Long Regardless, this is egregious. It is I mean, and, and in addition to that, <laughs> he told me, he told me, he said, you need to tell them that this is a beginning. It is not a steadfast, this is the way it's going to be. There's only two things in there that cannot change. One of them is a plumbing fee because the guy's going to charge us that much to come out and do a plumbing inspection. The other one is the electrical. Other than that, all these fees are negotiable up or down. So the reason he presented this is we, you know, our ordinance that takes care of this is antiquated. So we need to update our ordinance. And the amount we charge for the fees can go up and down based on what we come up with. But this is just a guideline to start. With. It's not concrete. Th this is such a horrible beginning to me. Well, well, Place to begin. Section three. Let me finish. Tells you one twelve and sixty three because sixty three was an ordinance that was already in place. It tells you what? It tells you one what and what? Section three makes reference to repealing ordinance number one twelve and sixty three. Okay, sixty three was the latest ordinance that identified this exact burden. The only thing that was changed off of 63 were the fees, which he just said that he- Because you said it was a dollar here and there. Yeah, I had a dollar for this and dollar yeah. that because it was so old. That would be bad because it's exercising power where it doesn't need to be exercised. But when you're talking about going from one dollar to, it's got thousands of dollars, hundreds of dollars, $75 here, $75 there. And, it, and it's, a, it's a, a work in progress. But this is such a bad beginning that it makes me question the motivation of who began here. You know, I want to look at, you know, where, how, who thought this was a starting point? Um, All he did was copy them. He got, got the numbers from a town smaller than us. He didn't do a lot of other research. He just put it out here for a beginning to start talking about it. Okay? So. I mean, we need to ask ourselves what we add of value to the people who continue to maintain the city government, you know. Um, New Dana has zero fees for everything here. So what do we offer as a city that's valuable? And these fees 
Uh, it's not just an amount here that's a problem. Uh, when the amounts are this big, it is a qualitative problem. It's not just a quantitative problem. I disagree because that's why it's given to the council for discussion. Nothing has been passed on to anyone. It's we have not in done. front of you to have the discussion on. We did not even contact the legal on it because of it being a duplicate of 63, the only thing changed was the fees because we didn't want to waste the money in getting the legal to review it because that ordinance had already been approved in the past. And if the fees need to be adjusted, this is y'all's opportunity to adjust it. But I, like I said earlier, it was suggested by our electrical contractor on any type of fees that we were going to have building permits on that it be at 50 cents a square foot because that was a commonality in the area. Um, the general provisions, Appendix A, where did that come from specifically? That is a duplication of 63. The only thing that has changed is the fees, and those variated in October <coughs> 63. Because this, I mean, it says if you repair your roof, uh, you're going to have to get a permit and pay. 50 cents a square foot, um, at least. I mean, there's, it's plus calculated. The yeah, plus the, uh, what is it? There was something else. It's 125. The remodel plan review for 75 plus the 50 cent per square foot. So and inspections if they inspect it. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there's a whole bunch of things about without building permit and will, with building permit, which I guess are exclusive to each other. But you can take exception to everything on here. I that's do. That's why it's in your okay. Yeah. That's why it's in your book. That's why it's sitting in front of you. Your eyes are on it. Now, what do you want to do? I have some. Um, I have some thoughts on this. Okay. Um, my husband has been an insurance adjuster for a thousand years. <laughs> He's old, <laughs> and we've talked about or city ordinances and uh, these kind of things. And he said, we are crazy if we adopt this. Okay. He said, you were setting yourself up for- Would insurance pay $2,000 to a city when a customer gets hail damage and replaces the roof? No. no. Can I ask a question? What, because like I said, this is the same ordinance on, that was approved ever however long ago. He said, the we, only do, thing that's the he said we do not have a city engineer. He said, we do not have anybody that has the expertise in this city. To do an inspection. Yeah. And, and all those things that said about, sorry. He said, there's no one in the city that's qualified to do any of these things. He mm -hmm. said, you're setting yourself up for a lawsuit if you adopt this. He said, you're crazy as a gene bug <laughs> okay. if you do this. He said, what do you want to do with it? He said, well, this is rejected, but. Yeah. Yeah. Rejected. This is just to start the conversation. Is yeah. it the dollar amount? It's no, rejected? it's not just the, the dollar amount. No, it's the ordinance. Okay. There was a TML document saying that if you, I forget the exact thing, but if you choose to enforce a building code like this, you could open the city up for its inability or uh, unwillingness to enforce asbestos uh, surveys. An asbestos survey is very expensive, tens of thousands of dollars. When Sanitation Solutions has torn down these houses in Edgemont, there has been no asbestos abatement whatsoever. Those lots are still covered in asbestos siding and asbestos floor tile. Yeah. See, we have no one that has the, the you know, the expertise to, to do any of these things. We have an ordinance officer, but he doesn't have the expertise. I see like five full-time jobs in this ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't even need to have this ordinance at all. So what do you suggest having in its place? Because we need to have something. Not necessarily. <laughs> yeah, well, New, New Diana does it. Let me tell you why. Because if you go and put a roof on your house, okay, and you get Jimmy John or Bobby Sue or whoever to come out and do it for you, okay, and they put it on, and something happens, and you have an insurance company come out and look at that, it doesn't just affect whoever that house is. It affects the insurance rates for the entire town. Not necessarily. No, yes, it does not. It will. No, eventually it will. 
No, it doesn't. I have my friend to the wire. tell you about that. They are not. I work for insurance companies. I'm just telling you. Straw man argument. I'm just telling you, I have conversations with three different insurance companies, adjusters, and all of them told me that without some type of ordinance in place to keep people from just going out and throwing shingles on a house and saying, oh, that looks great, okay, they come in and start looking at all that and your insurance rates will go up over time. Now, you say a lot, it's out much, but it doesn't matter. You know? the, the city doesn't have anyone properly qualified to be a better de determinant of getting a good deal on a roof getting redone. Mm -hmm. no, or, or an electrical inspection or somebody to do a footing. Well, let me tell you, I went to Hughes Springs. Hang on, one year ago I went to Hughes Springs and I asked the gentleman who does their inspections for their city what would, it would cost us to have him come over here and inspect something if we had an ordinance in place. At that point in time, it was $125 for him to come and do an inspection, plus whatever $20 permit fee or whatever we decided to put on there. And if it failed inspection, he would have to come back out and it would be another $100. So, and who is this person? Does sir, he have the, does he have the, the guy steel? Does, yes, he had the and qualification. The, and the equipment to test the post yes, beam. You're exactly every, right. He does it for huge springs all the time. Oh. That's his Nobody whole job for you here. Yeah. I'm sorry? Nobody does post tension rebar beams. I'm telling you, he beams. does everything in Hugh Springs. If you don't believe it, go ask him. You know, don't shake your head. No, if you haven't checked into it. I mean, we can, we can look at Hugh Springs and Dangerfield's and I drive a Ford situation. Postmark, could you drive junk? That's your fault. You bought it. Okay, same thing. If I put a crappy roof on my house and it leaks, it's my fault. I bought the cheap roof. I mean, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just no, telling I'm you. I'm just saying. So your insurance argument, it doesn't make sense. But in order There's to get a standard on your house, they come I'm just telling you, roof. at some point in time, we need something to make sure things are done right. And that's not government. That's true. Go ahead, well, two things. I don't understand why my would have to be re-inspected in between every tenant. That's just y'all wanting money. Yeah, that's uh -huh. in here. Second, is that the thought process going forward? Is it your contract with an inspector? Or would you employ an inspector through the city? We'd have to, right now, my understanding is like we'd have to get Hughes Springs and have their back home. And they I have said to they have would two do two different it. inspections, one fire and one structural, every single year. So how can this one man and I do know Mr. Decker. I've used him. Who? Mr. Decker's. Okay, we're talking about Mr. Derrick. From Hugh Springs Derrick. But uh, this is so, what I use. Yeah. So but is he qualified to inspect everything that's on this? Right. Not everything. He's not not plump. Everything. So what is what is the city's plan to employ these inspectors that we have to pay for? Is my question. Where are we finding these inspectors? Is it going to be a full time job <coughs> added to the city? Is it going to be no. individuals no, that you contract with? Contracts. And next year can go up. Cost us more. And there was a yearly fee, a hundred dollars safety inspection for any commercial. How can't I business in your debt? Yeah. And it, a year just if, for if, being there. If some loony Lone Star City Council passed Ordinance 63, maybe in the 60s, and it was never, maybe they were hippies, I don't know, and it was never uh, enforced, <laughs> fine, <laughs> fine, well, it's been on the books all this time. Luckily, it was never enforced. But now we're talking about doing it. And, and I agree with you in that respect because there's three ordinances that we're talking about previously, 112 and 63, and 63 being the primary one that this information came from. Whatever reasons, the only thing that I knew of was the dollar amounts were changed. Mainly in reference to a comment that you stated as far as on the inspections from one winter to the other. Something that was mentioned to me was through talking to Kyle, there are multiple, um, I guess you'd say tenants that will come in uh, or, or 
owners of property, they'll have people to come in and rent from them and do not do anything to improve the appearance or do anything to improve the home from one tenant to the other. And what was discussed with me was to get some of the people, some of these large businesses like in Dallas that own 40 and 50 houses in here, to try to get them to be responsible to pick up and make these homes that are falling down to make them look better and to put money into those houses before they rent it to another person. That's a, that's a state law. The okay. state on a tenant in an apartment complex or rental property, it is because the responsibility of the owners when the tenant leaves that that property has to be what they call a make rent. Because what's okay. happening is they, they were have having- They to go in, they have to clean, they have to paint walls, and then it's turned over to the next tenant. What's happening is they're having one person moving in and out and nothing being done. The door ain't even shut and the next person's moving yeah. in. And I get that, but if, one, if I have a tenant and you're talking corporations, I'm talking small level, right. I'm getting $350 a month for a house in Edgemont because but, it's Edgemont. Um, but what does your house look like? I mean, and I don't know, and that's not being as a point out what I'm saying. It's been updated, but if you why update do your... I pay the city to come in and inspect <laughs> something that I should maintain if I have a turnover in three weeks? Am I supposed to repaint the walls to suffice this inspector? I, I don't think this is an appropriate use of government to literally be invading your property like that. I, I think this is more or less encouraging either small town people to sell out or to let their property fall down around them because they, there are no incentives for businesses to come here. Now if you build a business, you're having to pay all these permitting fees. If you remodel a house or a business, you're paying all these permitting fees. Where's the incentive to build? Where's the incentive to open a business? All I'm seeing is being slapped on the wrist for trying to do something good for the I would like to table this until Kyle gets back. Yeah, Kyle's a Have him come to our next meeting and sit down with us and explain where he came there about everything, why he came to all this, these figures, how they were done. And uh, in the meantime, if you have a question, call me. I need to talk to you about something on this anyway. I'm not going to talk about it in here, but I'll explain. So are you making that as a motion? Yes, I am making a motion that we table that yeah. until the next meeting yeah. the file comes we back could, and then we can have a few more. No. Yeah. Say I'm more this issue. We have a we have a motion. We don't have a second yet. We probably may. I second. Um, but we could also discuss just rejecting this, right? If somebody else wants to bring something back up, but but we can reject this. This is not hard to reject. You can say the baseline oh, this. work in progress. Yes. Well, we can continue to discuss no. it. No. We table it. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor, table of this until Kyle gets back. Say aye. 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 It passes. What is it? Poo poo. Nay. Oh, uh, yeah. Why nay? It's a rock of poo poo. It gives us more time to look at it. Hopefully, everyone will be and back no next month. Well, there's no one's back. Hopefully, you'll be back next month. 7 8. Review discussion of possible actions for the EDC to solicit, to solicit bids for repairs slash replacement of the baseball field fencing located at the Lone Star City Park. Okay. Uh, back in. Late 21, uh, the 10 year packet, the EDC proposed the park project, which went through the approval process of having public hearings. It went through the council, everybody voted to approve it. Uh, we told you it would be done in the state. Uh, we have had several. Dating back to last year, we've had several teams, softball, baseball teams from around this area, 
some of which used the, the, the field to some extent in the condition it was in reluctantly last year. They tried to do some upgrades on it themselves and it's just too much for volunteers to do. Uh, we discussed it with the EDC uh, at the last couple of meetings and they would like to pursue, they want to start getting bids on what it would take for us to replace <clears throat> start out with the fencing. Uh, it's, it'll give you a multi-phase project, but once it's completed and cleaned up, we have been told that there will be teams who would be willing to rent the facility for practices. <clears throat> we have been contacted by one of the cities around here who have told us that they would set us up with four or five games per week in their league. And we have been told by a couple of coaches that they are willing to help us bring in some tournaments to make some extra money. Uh, it's not an overnight $10 million project that's going to bring money in. It's not going to do that. But it will give our youth something to do. It will give people a re another reason once it's cleaned up and looks nice and we get some people using it. It will give other people a reason to come into our town. and the EDC thinks it's a viable project. Uh, it is one of the things that we can spend money on. It meets 505, 151, and 152 as far as projects go for Texas local government code. Uh, and it has been identified when we not did research, it has been identified throughout the United States that outdoor activities like this, and it doesn't just have to be youth, it could be an adult with a wheelchair that's going to use the facility. But uh, it brings people together, it gives them a gathering place, it allows them something to do. Uh, plus, as we go through this and develop it, you know, there are other things we're wanting to do in that area to bring it up to where somebody will be proud of. And it will give them something else to do. Uh, the park is a big attractor for people. Uh, we have, as we said, we've had a couple of new businesses. You guys open your business. We've had Big Ben's open their business. We have another business fixing to open up that should bring in traffic, quite a bit of traffic next to them. We have the two businesses on the north end of the town that are fixing to open. Uh, potential for one more that we're talking to. Don't know how it's going to work out yet, but uh, so we're slowly we're starting to improve the conditions, let's put it that way. Give reason, people a reason to come here. Uh, we're not ever going to be a town, I don't think anymore, to where an influx of people are going to move into our town. That's just not going to happen. I don't think Especially anybody wants to see a plan or you know, anything <laughs> like that. But we do have the ability to get tourism traffic through here uh, and complement what we already have in Rocky Point. And if we get some tournaments in here and things like that, give people reason. Uh, we already have, we have Scene View, we have this hotel up here, five, six and open up. So that we give people a place to stay. Uh, our next projects are going to be trying to help a couple people who want to open up restaurants. So, all that being said, we're wanting you to give us the, the go ahead to get the bids, uh, <coughs> probably get them turned in. I'd like to get the bids the process done by the middle of February, late part of February. So, depending upon the cost, we can uh, award the bid maybe around the first part of March and have everything done around April 1. I already have three contractors who have expressed an interest in bidding on the project. Uh, once the bid is sent out, or the request for bid, we will have a meeting date to be determined right now, and have the contractors come in, actually physically go down there and look and give us their specs, because everybody's going to measure a little bit different all this stuff. Some of the material that's down there we're trying to reutilize to reduce the cost. But uh, I think it's a worthwhile project, not only for 
the kids in this town, the youth in this town, but bringing people from in outside of town. So EDC wants me to present that to you, and that's what I'll do. Okay. Council wants to approve the EDC to solicit bids for repairs and placement of the baseball field fencing located at the Lone Star City Park. Roughly, what are you thinking it's going to cost? Sorry? What are you thinking it's going to cost? It, it's dependent upon the type of fencing we put up, the, you know, the quality of it. Uh, I'll give you an example. I tried to look at the, uh, the web type fencing that they use in some of these ballparks. It's like $40,000 for that. Well, that, to me, in my opinion, and the EDC, they have, we haven't even discussed it yet, but in my opinion, that's going to be too easy to tear down. It's going to have to be something that's, but, and you, you, understand, you understand what I'm saying, that when you go down there, if you make it too easy to vandalize, that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at it to see how that can be done at a minimal cost, make it look right, and, and do that. So I, I, I can't give you a t total cost right now because I haven't even looked at the figures, to be honest with you. But you think significantly less than $40,000? No. I don't think that. I, th I said forty thousand dollars would be the minimum for the fabric fencing, okay. and I think that is not the way to go. That's just my opinion on it now. Whatever the EDC determines, you know, when it comes, who knows what people are going to bid on it? You know, the price. The problem is prices fluctuate so much. Uh, it's hard if you, you. It's hard to nail something down. Uh, that's why we proposed this like we proposed it because we knew at that point in time just recovering from COVID, just to, that, you know, a piece of wood fluctuates four or five bucks in a two-week period of time. And if you have to go 60 days every time you do something, my gosh, by the time you get there, the cost is going to be out late. So, uh, as I said, it you know, we're into getting the best bang for the buck, so to speak. But I really think that the youth of this town and the citizens can, can use something they can be proud of. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Public comment. I do have one comment. I would request that the city would prevent any private citizens from bringing their own cattle gate and putting over the gate to prevent other private citizens from entering the park, the ball, ballpark. This Just, whole year, I, there was a, a private citizen brought their own gate and said, if I'm going to fix up the field, then I don't want somebody bringing their pickup truck out here and running it up. So they brought their own fence and their own lock and locked it. It was locked all year long. Or maybe somebody wanted to bring a tiller and work out the infield, you know? They, they wanted so to make improvements. We could not have private citizens taking ownership of I just, city property. Uh, I just had a lock yeah. and chain removed off a of facility in town that I found out a private citizen put on there and according to TML, no private citizen has the right to at block all other to put a citizens. lock yeah. or any right. It on was on there all year. The, yes, I'll make sure that doesn't happen again. <coughs> And if it's still there, it'll be removed tomorrow morning and we'll do something else. I don't and, believe it's there. And you know, I'm going to tell you too, we're open to suggestions. If you guys know, if there's something you want to see, something you think that can be done that would be I, maybe. I, I walked all around the fence the other day and there's trees this big growing this side of the outfield yes. fence. Yeah. And when did the, the, the smaller field get taken down? It, I don't know. It's been it just disappeared. For a long time. Like it just I've disappeared. Been, and you compare it to Urban Park, which has four or five fields. No. Uh, I think it's hard to compete with that. I was up there the other day, uh, and it wasn't as in good of shape as it used to be. And that probably comes and goes just with a group of uh, parents that maintain it. But I don't see how you really draw people compared to four or five parks. And they were talking about uh, the basketball court, possibly putting the basketball court where the Little League field was. So, you know, you're not going to have two again if you do we, that and we and one of the things we did talk about too in conjunction with that is instead of putting the basketball court down there redoing it putting in a field for like six u or you know the smaller kids to play so we would have a smaller field and the bigger field that remains to be one way or another as far as a cost factor goes i don't know i don't know uh you're aware of what the basketball court looks like you know that was one of those things that we it's not part of this issue you know, we can discuss that any time, but the thing about it is, is with this, we do the big field, and then if we want to do the small field, we can get bids on that at the same time to see 
if we, they might be able to do it at a reduced price. So, just for time, let's just I make a motion that we allow the EDC to solicit bids for the baseball field. I'd like to see I'd like to see how the basketball court thing comes out first. Do what, Cody? I'd like to see how the whole basketball court thing is resolved. Let first. me honor the motion, Ramona. I've got a motion to go forward with yes. the issue here. A second. I second. What's council's decision? Yeah, you're asking right. for a vote? For, <laughs> sir, are you asking for a vote? I believe so. Yes. yes. Allow you to go forward with your three bids you want to look at. That's just a proactive approach to yeah. what yeah. so you can yeah. quantify it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nay. And nay and one, two, yeah. four, volume four. Okay. Seven dash nine. Review discussion possible actions to remove and replace the city hall copy machine lease agreement and lease agreement terms. See you even looking at this comment on the I apologize for the fact that it didn't make it in the packet the lady sent to me today. Our situation on this well, is right now, when you came in. Um, the copy machine that the city hall has up front right now is out of, out of lease. Um, the any type of service that we have done on it, uh, we can get it covered up until August of this year, but because it's uh, an out-of-date copy machine, it if it breaks or something happens on it, they do not have spare parts on a lot of them. They don't know if they'll have spare parts for that one. Um, they have proposed uh, another lease, asked if, it's, it asked if we wanted to sign another lease. Uh, they have some machines in there right now which is the sample that y'all have, that they are available. They're the best option to offer at this point in time for the money because she's aware that we're trying to keep the cost down as much as we can. I asked her to provide a list of the cost if we went with the five-year lease versus the three-year lease. That would be $158 a month for five year or either $230 a month for a 39-month lease. Um, it's like everything else. Mayor and I talked about the fact of purchasing a copy machine months ago. That's not a, a valid move because they expire. They get old. You got to pay for all the toner. You got to pay for all the repairs and works. Anywhere from seventy-five to one hundred twenty-five dollars an hour. Most businesses go with lease programs. Uh, they take care of the machine. They provide you with the toner. They have people to come out and work on it. They keep you with current technology. One of the biggest problems that they're having right now is people are actually hacking into copy machines as they do on computers and the new copy machines have a some type of mechanism in it that it is supposedly to help prevent individuals being able to hack into that which allows them to hack into your possible server because your printer is connected to your server which then ties into your computer system so um, our options are we keep the machine we have, hope it doesn't break. Uh, we would have to start paying fees on it to have it repaired if something happened on it. Um, or we consider going with a machine like this. She said it's comparable to the one that we have. Right now they have some in stock that if we choose to not go with it and we wait six months down the road, they will not have these machines possibly in stock that if we have something they break on that one. We would have, and if we chose to go with the lease, that we would have to take whatever they had available. And a lot of the machines are going to be bigger and they're going to be more expensive, or either they would be smaller because she says these particular machines, like ours that we have, go quickly. Uh, I realize that's a sales pitch and stuff like that, but I know from working in private industry, um, if you don't keep your lease up to date and if you don't keep your maintenance on them, letting them do the maintenance, it ends up costing you as a, an individual more money um, if you allow, uh, if we continue with what we've got. My hesitancy is on the fact of the 39 month or five year lease. I don't like long term leases, but you do get a better rate at, that, at doing a lease like that. Um, 
there were, I asked her to include the option also of combining the copy machine up front with the PD copy machine. Um, currently, that little PD copy machine back there is costing three twenty a month. I was going to try to do away with it, but I found out that we had a five year lease on that, so it's going to be twenty five before we can do away with it. Uh, if we combine the two on a single lease, then our two years that we have on the small PD copy machine then converts from a two year to a five year. I personally do not want to do that because I want that copy machine going. If we can do that for the savings of the money, but we're trying to find out too if if it's a requirement for the PD to have a separate copy machine, such as for NIBRS reports or any type of special reports. And I've talked to some that said that it was not, and then I've, someone told me that it was, so we've got to dig into that. Chief is going to look into that. Um, the only reason why I, I realize this is a functional thing that should be able to be handled in the office, and we do this as a continuation from as, is, as was done in the past, but again, this is one of those things I'm trying to make sure anything that's made decision or purchase wise is presented to the council. I don't want a Copeland situation where the council don't know about it. And I did not want to extend the lease or extend a lease without it being presented to you guys for y'all to have the input and for it to be documented. So can we can we the machine we have now, what's its arrangement? It is out of it is out of lease. Can we buy it very cheaply? A buyout clause in the contract. Uh, I don't know if they all allow that. I that, I didn't think of asking them about that because typically when you buy them, then you take on a headache. All copier contracts come with a one penny buyout because they don't want the hardware back because they have to deal with toxic toner and all that right. stuff. So it's usually a one penny buyout. I would have to, I didn't bring that copy of the lease over here uh, that was signed. And if something like that is the case, then we can continue to use it until it breaks and then worry about a lease. Are you making that as a motion? Yes. Well, the, the thing on it is, um, and again, I'm not taking this as a sales pitch, but I know that it's typically the way it is. If we wait too long to five before we decide what we're going to do, you're not going to possibly get this particular system, and you would have to go with something There's possibly more expensive. Options. Yeah, that sounds like a high pressure sales pitch, like, got to buy it now. No, no, and that's why I said I know a sales pitch on it, but um, um, with us being out of contract, if we have something to go down on it, you're going to pay a minimum of $75 an hour plus whatever parts, if you can find the parts. And that's one of the things she said. They've already had some machines of that type to go down. Some of the parts they're not able to find now. And that's why they're trying to pull them out of the system. So. Or get rid of it and then worry about a lease at that point, if and when it breaks. Here's the PD copier if this one breaks until you get Yeah, well, that's a good thing about having two copiers as well. The right. copier in the back is extremely slow. It's yeah. not much more than like a desktop printer. Yeah. And it, actually, a printer is faster than that copier is. Um, I'm not sure how we ended up with that one, but we did. I make a motion that we do not sign a new lease. We continue as is. Hopefully, that means buying the copier we have now at almost no cost, hopefully. Um, yeah, and, and then if it breaks, Six months or a year from now, then we can address it then. Okay. I have a motion to retain the situation as is, sort of. But hopefully yes, improved. Do I hear a second? Okay. Oh, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes. So you're willing, you want to try to see if we can buy that? Mm -hmm. Okay, 7 10. Review discussion and possible action for Lone Star Senior Citizens Gadabout Club. Please. Board of Directors, members Gentlemen Meadows to discuss the $30,000 $30, economic development.
Corporation Stanton for a finalization of the senior state. Ms. Meadows. Hi. You have the floor, Matt. Well, I talked last time for three minutes, but now I get longer than that. You're longer than three minutes. Okay, I am the uh, secretary on the board, and uh, when we uh, revitalize the senior center with the Economic Development Board, which Leslie was on, we thought we were getting the $30,000 to put a new roof on and do everything we need to to get it up and running. And we never signed any loan papers. We never thought it was a loan to be paid back. And so that's what we're here to talk about. And we have several compadres that were on the board at the time, too, that um, never, we never heard the word loan until just recently. Right, Bill? You, Jim? Mm -hmm. It was always presented as a project, right. the same as the ball field. Right. Tonight. Are the baseball Not players paying back the money? Any comments? I gotta wait till he gets back. I didn't know he was gone. Yeah. <laughs> I was there at a lot of those meetings and. Well, I don't necessarily, and some of you guys may hate me for this, I, don't, I didn't agree with the 30000 giveaway anyway, but that was how it was presented, in my yes. opinion, was that this is a taxpayer gift. I think I was yeah, over the taxpayer gift the way I it. I remember you sitting on council, and you made a comment one day, and I certainly yeah. agree with you. Why can't we disagree and it just be okay? Nobody's going to hate you for having a different opinion. <laughs> I think I was the only one who voted against the expenditure, uh, but I don't remember it being a loan. I'm sorry, sir. Please repeat that. Not quite get it. What? I said I think I was the only one who voted against the expenditure, and I don't remember hearing about it being a loan. I think you're you're part of the agenda. See, uh, you're part of this. You're on the agenda. Oh, so well, I don't have to. Run. Sort of. Well, did actually, she did not sign. When you actually sign the paperwork to be on it, it's supposed to be for each person to speak. Oh, I needed everyone to sign up this evening. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's for the I'm senior citizens. Got it. I'll tell you what I'm interested. Since this thing has been such a heated issue, there seems to have been a, uh, some communication. Please speak. I mean, they've been here three hours well, to speak. What, is, what this is not going to turn into is a fight. Sure, right. Okay. Absolutely. Because there's been a lot of animosity in this thing that's gone back and forth, and that's unacceptable, and that never gets us any place. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So go ahead. My biggest concern with it all is that when this came up as a loan, then it was presented to the senior citizen board that now we were under the discretion and control of the EDC and the City Council. That every all the motions that we made and everything that we did could be brought to y'all and and demolished. And we had no self organization at all. That it's that we would be under your discern and your discretion on our actions that we did. And that was that was our biggest thing here is that we understood that we were taking this on as a senior citizen organization to manage ourselves and to be a self-sustaining organization. And then then when this was presented as a loan to us, it was said that we would be under your discretion and your discretion. Okay. Anyone else want to speak? I agree with him. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's some confusion over the status of the funds you were receiving. Mm -hmm. Not on our part. Yeah, it was it was not presented as a loan, it was presented as a project. Like I say, same as the ball field and other projects that EDC has, has done. It's not and exactly the same. Pardon? It's not exactly the same that the ball field is owned by the city government. And we're not owned by the city. We're not owned by anyone. It was a private sector from the beginning. And the EDC is part of the city government. It is the city government. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I, 
to, I think the concern here, uh, and you, animosity, whatever you want to call it, is people put in their time and effort to have this, get this thing up and going, and it was for the good of the community. They, they feed like 20 or 30 people a day over there with the Meals on Wheels program. It's a good program. But when you're, when the, the board members are being considered to, that they have a $30,000 loan that they have to pay back, and at the terms of when that will be paid back, they look to be under the control of the EDC and the city council was the way it was presented until that loan was paid back. And looking at it long term at $15 every time it's rented, a percentage of you know, $15 for the, if it's rented for $150, 10% goes back to the loan, it would take 100 years to pay it off. So I think that's the problem that caused the friction and I just want the city council to understand that. Okay. What action do you want from city council on this? I want to make sure we all are on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. You want to read it? What, what I would like to particularly have said in here is, is something along these lines is that this is read into the Lone Star Senior Citizen Minutes the EDC minutes and the city council minutes is that the Lone Star senior citizens never ask for, applied for, or received a loan from the Lone Star Economic Development Corporation. Neither the Lone Star Economic Development Corporation nor the city of Lone Star will have any administration or supervision over Lone Star senior citizens. Lone Star Senior Citizen Center is a self-governing organization and no oversight from any other concerns. And if we fall on our faces, we fall on our faces on our own, and we don't come crying to you or the EDC or the city council saying, oh, we failed, and y'all told us that we were under your discretion and your discern, now give us some money. If we fail, we fail. We wanna fail on our own and not be having to be governed by two other, by two other organizations. laws and regulations govern this, sir? TML told us when I this first started, this has been going on for over a year. <clears throat> uh, when it first started, Morris County Clavery was involved. They were wanting to come in and take over the building, and I was approached by Gail Billy, who was one of the only, I guess, surviving members, you might say. Uh, and after talking to her, I thought this was something that needed to be for the senior citizens of this town, not for some outside organization to come in and take it and do away with what they wanted to do, and then we not have anything. Because, let's face it, up until now, there's not a lot for, especially senior citizens, to do. We wanted to get the people on the other side of town involved, this side of town, and the surrounding area. Not just Lone Star, we're talking anybody you want to come. It took us approximately seven months because the financial statements hadn't been filed since 2007. They were not in good standing with the state. They were not in good standing with the Internal Revenue Service. So basically, they had just banned the whole thing with, with the state. So after lengthy conversations going back and forth, letters going back and forth, everything else, uh, we were reinstated with the state of Texas. After communications with the Internal Revenue Service, uh, they sent me a letter and said they were giving us back the uh, tax exempt ID number and they would restore us as a 501c3 as long as everything is done according to IRS regulations uh, when we first started this out we asked talked to the EDC I went to TML I said you know this is I'm not sure about this project tell me can we do this can we can we do whatever 
He said, yes, you can, you can do that. I said, okay. So at that point in time, I uh, asked the EDC uh, if they would allow the senior citizens, how much would they allow them to use uh, to get the building up and running? And uh, the amount that was settled on was $30,000, up to $30,000, with approval of expenditures by the EDC as they went forward. So there was not anything spent that was not run through council. Uh, my goal for them was to help them in spending money and minimizing it under $20,000. But when they got to that point, they ran into an issue with the water heater. Uh, there was also an issue with the HVAC. And we thought that the, the heating system was all that needed to be replaced. Come to find out, the recommendation was to place the whole thing. So we went through the bid process. Obtained, we obtained bids for the roof. We obtained everything that was done, we obtained bids for other than the paint, stuff like that. Uh, the total expenditures were $28,000, a little over $28,000, almost $29,000. <clears throat> At that point in time, we were approached by a couple of different citizens, and they said, oh, well, since the EDC funded this, or has given money for this, that means a private citizen can come up there and say, oh, I want to use this building, and we have to allow them to use it for nothing approached the members of the board at that time and I said, you know, do it however you want to, but if you want to keep it a senior citizens association, you need to put some caveat on it or you need to, you know, pay back some of the money, you know, and they agreed that at that point in time, and they want to call it an in-kind, it doesn't matter what you call it, that when they rented the building, they would pay 10% of that money back to the EDC. Okay. Given that, there was never a need for a loan structure. There was never a need for anything because that's what they agreed upon. Nobody said a word about it. EC said, that's a great deal. You know, we're not worried about it. It doesn't matter. Because you know, what you don't understand is if it fails, it comes back to the EDC, the building and everything. That's written into the bylaws, and everybody who was on the board of directors at that time signed it and said, yeah, that's good. Okay. So it doesn't matter what happens. In the end, it's coming back to the EDC if it fails anyway. That's, but, and that's a moot point right now. But the fact of the matter was said that if you're making that effort, when you rent the building, it doesn't matter if you rent for $50, if you pay $5 the EC, that's not going to kill anybody. It's not going to satisfy a $30,000 note. That wasn't the issue. The issue was they were making an effort to offset the cost that were used on that. That's, that's where the contention started is with the fact that they wanted to make it out to where, oh, it's a personal loan, and my grandkids, that's, that was nothing like that was ever said, ever. What was said was you're making an effort, that's all that matters, there's no paperwork, there's no loan paperwork, you're doing something that's good, that's all it was said, and that's where it was stood, okay? How it got blown out of portion and, and proportion and why, okay. Okay. And I'm not getting into that. Okay? Because it was never... The, I, I will tell you, at an EDC meeting, at an EDC meeting, the word loan bro got brought up, and it was like a fireworks show. And since then, it's been, oh, well, it's a loan, it's a loan. That, that is the only time that wording was ever used. Now, the EDC did say, the EDC did say, for a year period of time, we invested this money and we know you're trying to give back. We want to make sure it works, because if not, it comes back to the EDC and we got to worry about it. Okay? So the EDC asked for oversight for that year just to make sure it got up on its feet, it was running right, everything was doing right, the proper documentation was put forth to the IRS. Uh, proper paperwork was filed with the state all the time. All the tax returns were filed. Everything was done on paper. That was the oversight that was asked for, to make sure the financials were done in a way where the IRS 
would stay off their back, or if an audit came in, they would leave them alone. That was the intent. Okay? That's all the intent has ever been. But there was resistance, and they did. They came out and said no, because the EDC, since I was on the board and the registered agent for the uh, senior citizens, they wanted me to be able to see the financial stuff, to look at the bank account. All that was asked for, all that was asked for was to give me access, electronic access to see the bank account. That was it. No check writing privileges, no privileges to transfer money, no nothing. Okay? That's where the resistance came up, and we were told not only no, but nobody will see that. We have one person responsible for that, and that person will take care of it. Well, we just got through talking to auditors, and that's poor internal controls. Okay, so I tried to set up a policy, you know, a work in progress policy to talk about, about this was what needed to happen. Conflict of interest policy, financial policy, things where if somebody came in and said, let me see what you're doing, you could say, this is how the independence goes. The same person's not reconciling bank account and having an option to write a check. The same people's not doing this. My, our cash management is right. That's the policies that have to be in place because that's what somebody looks at when they come in. And you have to be an open book. It's a lot worse than having a business because you're accountable not only to yourselves, but it's an op you're accountable to the public because you're doing things for them. Okay? That's another point of resistance that got slain, you know, because I was accused of wanting control. I don't want control. I never wanted control. You know, I want to guide them in a way to make them understand how it's got to be done to make sure they don't get in trouble. And there's more resistance to that than I've ever seen in my life. And three of them at a meeting about four weeks ago, five weeks ago, Came to the meeting, turned in a resignation, resigned from the ED, uh, from the EDC board. Okay, that left two members, three members, and myself. Three three voting members and myself left. Jolyn, Allison, Gail, Lily, and myself. Okay, at that point in time and when Jim. they walked out, yeah. and Jim, and Jim, and Jim. excuse me, and Jim. You said EDC, and that left us with unpaid bills that were due that had come in. That we had to write check for. We didn't have access to the bank account. The bank, I didn't go independently. I went, took two other people with me to the bank and said, what do we need to do to fix this? They left us without access. They left us without anything, and we have bills to pay. How do we handle that? And I was told to my face, they came in and told us, you are not to have access to anything. Okay. Now, so we're at an impasse now. Yeah. What, wait no. just a minute, what, how do we get the resolution on this? Nobody ever asked them to resign, you know? All, all that's been asked of them was, and we, here's the deal. There's been many times that they've been approached and told, they, you ask them and they said, we don't know how to do that. Okay, let me give you information and help you and how you need to do that. They're, they don't want to do that. They told me they don't want to do that. What? Okay? I've tried to tell them, your <coughs> financials, you need to be able, it's called fund accounting. It's different from regular accounting. You have to set it up to where you have, if you want to have an emergency fund, you need to have an emergency fund set up in your accounting, in your books. All that needs to be done fund accounting. They never indicated they were willing to do that. It, we don't need that. It's not a big deal. You know, they didn't want to write receipts for everything. Receipts from a nonprofit are not for the organization. It's for the individuals giving the money. You have to offer them a receipt at everything. Because if they want to use it for taxes, you have to give them a receipt. Period. There's no that's not me. You have to give them a year end statement that says you donated this much, just like you do at a church. It's not me. That's an IRS regulation. I printed it out, have it in a book to show them. You know, so I don't have a problem who runs it. That's not my point. You know, I was approached by two people who were left. Uh, the three of us were, well, why did you do it that way? Well, what do you want us to do? 
Did you want us not to have the ability to pay the bills and then to cut the electricity off and stuff? Is that what you want? We could have done it that way. So at that point in time, I took it and I said, here you go. Take it. That man right there said, I don't want it. I don't want nothing to do with it. Joe Lynn said, I don't want it. Who's going to do it? There was nobody else to do it. And to this day, there's still not anybody to do it but me because Allison's there. She don't want to do it. She's offered to be the president. Gail's there. She sure don't want to do it. Who's going to do it? Okay? So it's not a power thing. It's a necessity to keep it running, to do it right. Now, they can be mad. They can be glad. I really don't care. It doesn't matter to me who runs it or whatever. I don't care. But the thing about it is, it needs to be done according to the regulations that are set up by the IRS and the state. And it needs to have proper controls as far as financial controls, cash controls. There needs to be a conflict of interest policy and different things that need to be put in place. Those are required for nonprofits. Okay? That, that's all I want to tell you. Sure, go ahead. In the beginning, we appreciated Rudy's help. He helped us get the tax things going, the state regulations. He helped us tremendously. Then out of the blue, he presented us with this document that made it his show. I mean, basically, he read it. Cody's read it. Read it. Uh, any of y'all can read it. Do you have anybody who has the expertise probably run it so that you don't get an illegality issue? We can find someone. We don't need some. You, don't, did, you read the document. We never said that we didn't need controls. We never said that. I don't know. I don't know what conversation you were having. Go ahead we never and look said at me, that. please. Pardon? Look at me, please. <laughs> We never said that, and we did appreciate his help, but then when he brought us this document, and he is changing everything and making up things because, okay, I was the treasurer, and I did tell him, no, I'm not giving anybody access to the online, because I'm responsible for any transaction online. And he never once said, all I want is the view option. He never said that. He said he wanted to be on the Everybody got, everybody could see the bank statement each month. Okay, you don't have to adjust all that to me. You don't. I, guess I, I just want to know what is a resolution going for? To say that the senior center does not owe $30,000 out of the goodness of their hearts, if they want to pay some here and there, then the EDC will gladly accept it, but it is not a loan, and there is no oversight from the EDC. Like they said, if we fail, we fail, and the EDC gets it. There, this was all out of the blue, all this oversight and loan stuff, and he said that no one ever said loan, but in that document it says loan and oversight. And we want that abolished because even if we're not on the board any longer, we don't want future board members to have to deal with that. And Bob said it would take 100 years to repay it. At that rate, it would take like 600 years. And, and they said they want EDC oversight for the remainder of the loan, not one year. No. It said until the loan is paid. Who's they? Pardon me? Who, who is they? In who the wrote this? That, oh. that Rudy presented to us. As, as, uh, you're on the board of the Senior Citizens Group. Because a second ago you said uh, three people resigned from the EDC. I'm sorry, I can't, I didn't understand. A second ago you said that three people had resigned from the EDC. I think you misspoke. You meant. I, I'm sorry, I meant the senior citizens. And I think yes. one or two resigned from the EDC. We, we appointed two new people, so I think at the same time two resigned from the, the EDC. Yes, one of those was a, a mutual person on both boards. And the issue was because of what happened at senior citizens, they also felt they had to resign from the EDC. That was the document. Did you say two people resigned off the EDC? I believe so. Who was the second one? Uh, 
No, just one person. Just one. Just one. Just one. One. Yeah, we just appointed. We just appointed two at one time. So. Huh? We just appointed two at one time. So we I thought. Just well, it's because we were short one. We were short one. Okay. We were short one. Yeah, because Carl retired. <coughs> Carl, so that left his vacancy plus the other vacancy, and that's when we borrowed the other two. I don't see this being resolved in this conversation. Does council want to make a decision on it? Do you want to send it back to the EDC? I don't. What? A decision on what? I don't. To resolve this oh. issue. I don't. Mr. Mayor. Be Go ahead, Jim. Before you say anything else, uh, way back in early days when the Morris County Collaborative was wanting into the building before EDC spent all that money and everything. Rudy and the rest of us went through the bylaws when the building was originally donated by the Surratt's and the Curry's the building and the land and determined that legally Morris County Collaborative could not take over the building. That's what I was talking to you. My question is if we fail now how is EDC going to take over the building? Those those bylaws still apply. From when the Currys and the Surratts started the whole thing, it has to go to a nonprofit organization for the betterment of of the senior citizens. And, the, and that's that, the only thing the EDC could possibly do with it anyway. If if we as a group that are running it now failed, that's all they could do with it anyway. Can I address that, Mayor? I wonder what Cody has to say. Sorry, if a 501c3 dissolves, any property, because it's a nonprofit, a government is also a nonprofit right. corporation. Uh, so if any nonprofit <laughs> ceases to exist, uh, so the EDC and the municipal corporation are all organized by the Secretary <coughs> of State and they're recognized as corporations technically. Um, but a, a 501c3 nonprofit corporation is a lot different. Than a government nonprofit corporation. A government nonprofit corporation is much more open uh, to public access to the to all everything, every record, every document. A 501c3 has minimal uh, reporting to the public that produces public records. Um, so any 501c3 anywhere in the whole country that ceases to exist, no one can retain earnings or profits or assets of any sort and they have to donate it to either a government or a nonprofit. They're equal in the IRS's eyes there. Okay. And the when, the bylaw, when the bylaws were written, I guess Jim forgot. When the bylaws were written, were rewritten I should say and revised <coughs> to keep it because the bylaw, the original bylaws that were written said if there was an inactivity, that it would go to another organization, okay? To keep it from having the same issue with Morris County or anybody else trying to come in and take that building over, in the bylaws, it was when revised, it was written that if it did not work, that it would come back to the EDC and they could operate it as a senior citizens only. So the EDC would have the responsibility to run it as a nonprofit or to make sure it got run as a nonprofit. That prevented someone from an outside agency coming in trying to take it over. Everybody signed it. I have the copy, everybody's signature on it. It's the last clause in the bylaws. It says if it doesn't work, it goes to the EDC to be operated as a nonprofit. Senior Citizens Association says it in those exact words. Okay. So I think the original question was the thirty thousand dollars. Was it a loan? Was it a grant? Right. Yeah. Yes. So you said that this was entered into a loan after the fact. Yes. So would that even no. hold up in court? Like is it wasn't it entered into a loan. The the word loan got thrown out there. But if you expect it to be paid back, that's a loan. Here's the deal. So would there why is there not a contract? Is that standard because procedure for the EDC to grant money and not have a 
a contract as to where it's because going or what it's they, when we when I approached them and told them what the issue was because they were afraid they did not want to have to open it up as a quote unquote community center so, so anybody that was done as a workaround to avoid having to let the citizens and when that was done and when, the, okay. which, and when that was done right. they voluntarily voluntarily said well, you know what it would only be right for us to do this 10 percent of the rental and give it back to the edc so that was as their often decision. as you're on the phone with tml wouldn't tml say there should be a loan document by this we didn't do that because it was a good faith gesture on both but you're spending money that's not yours so there should definitely be a paper trail if there if was a loan needed tml did not tell us that i asked i think any good attorney yeah. would tell you you can't enter tell into a loan like that uh, yeah i just want the, the morris county collaborative Ooh. is a non-profit <laughs> is it a 501c3 or is it a foundation <coughs> it's a foundation it's a 501 and I think it got some. It got funding from the James Hogg Foundation, which yeah, is also correct. a nonprofit, but yes. I think it's slightly different to right. the IRS. Yes. But so I think that the Morris County Collaborative could also receive the building legally, as just as a government could have any nonprofit. Well, but here's the deal. They came in. They were trying to get a quick claim deed on the property after going through multiple stacks of documentation. I found the warranty deed where the property was deeded to the Senior Citizens Association at the cost of one or $10, I'm sorry. So it was never given to them. It was purchased for $10, okay? The Senior Citizens Association was purchased for $10 from Mr. Curry, Mr. Surratt. Those are the people who did it, okay? So, the warranty deed supersedes anything else. Contacted an attorney and I told him what the issue was. He said, you don't need an attorney. You have the warranty deed and that's all you need. So them trying to go around the system and getting a quick claim deed was moot for them. And they came when we had one of the public hearings and they and I told them that, I said, we have a quick, or you want a quick claim deed? All that is to go around the system basically. We have the warranty deed, and the guy got up and walked out and never said another word about it. So the warranty deed is, we have the warranty deed to the property. A, a quick claim deed is saying, I have no claim to this property whatsoever. You could you could sell, or you could somebody could pay you for 15 quick claim deeds on the same property. Yep, you're right. And uh, the Senior Citizens Guide About was originally a 501c3. It's, yes, still is. But then it was completely... It had, it had not filed the, uh, what's the name of the form? The yearly form of the IRS that you have to file. Are you talking about the 990? Yes. The state? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, from the IRS. The 990. Oh, oh, yeah, the 990 form for the IRS. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you don't that tax return had not been filled out since 2007. Right. So it was completely done. I mean, you can restart it as a whole new one. Well, but here's the issue. When I sent them the documentation, trying to figure out, because at that point in time... Sent who? Sent the IRS. We did not know at that point in time if we were going to have to pay back tax issues on it to get it up and running again. Okay? There was a possibility that there was a $1,000 penalty for each year taxes were not filed, or the form was not filed. Okay? And it... It could be $1,000 a day, okay? So when I talked to the IRS on the phone finally, when I went to the state, first of all, I do get reinstated with the state of Texas, you know? Much cheaper and easier. Yeah, well, yeah, it was, it was a longer process, but yeah. So I got that done. Then I had to go to the IRS. Well, they give you a tax ID number, and you, you retain that forever. doesn't matter if your business goes, now you still have that number, okay? So to get that number back, we had to file with them, send them a letter, and they sent it back. And in this letter, they said, okay, we're going to start you from here with the same tax ID number. You're okay, blah, 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 blah. They never said they would not come back and want payment for the tax returns that weren't filed. That, I, my 
experience tells me that for three to five years that can still happen. And I told them that. that that's my only concern. Other than that, everything to this point is good to go. Now, the tax return is due in April. Okay, it's got to be filed by then. Okay, for this last year. Okay. So, to keep it in good stand, the, the nine nannies, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the state forms have to be filed quarterly. Filed at the 2nd of January. It's filed for this quarter. Has to be done every quarter. Whether you owe anything or not has to be filed. Okay, same thing with the IRS. Whether you owe money or whether you don't owe money, owe them money, you have to file it. It's a required process. And it's not just put down senior citizen got about, we only took in 3,000. There is a 10 or 15 page document. We had to fill out a form 1023, which is 30 pages long, to even get it reinstated again. The nonprofit tax return is approximately 10 to 15 pages. And it's like I tried to explain to them, and I still will try to explain to them. What they look for is, you can't take your money, put it in an account, and say, we're going to put everything in the general fund. You cannot do that. Whether your intent is to do that or not, they look at nonprofits as being something that you're going out in the community and doing. So the IRS expectation that there's part of that tax return says, what are your top three or four things that you did within the last year where you spent money, you accounted for it, and you spent money on it? To this point, we've done one thing. And that's we furnished uh, Christmas presents to some of the, se the senior citizens in some of the local nursing homes. They have Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels doesn't count because Meals on Wheels is not their program. They are offering the facility for Meals on Wheels to be a congregate site. But there is no, the senior citizen can't say, oh, well, we're doing this because it's not their program. They can say we're offering the facility. I think the IRS's biggest concern is your ability to accept uh, contributions Con yep. and Give out contribution relay statements. Yes, tax keep up with all benefits. That. And how are you spending the money? That's their issue. Do you have a comment? No. What does all this have to do with the loan? Yeah. It's like... Uh, this has been a long, arduous trail, and people didn't understand what had occurred and all the dynamics that were involved, and that's why I let this thing go on so long. I was dreading this subject all night long, knowing that this is where we were going to end up, hoping that we all lived here as friends when it was all over. Mr. Reader, you want to say anything? Does the EDC have the authority and ability to make a donation of $30,000 or is there any state requirements that have to be in place that they get some sort of repayment? Get yeah, what? The a commitment? Repayment. repayment. Is, there a, is there an obligation of the EDC? The only way you cannot, the only way you don't get a repayment is if it is structured that way, documentation is done, they have put it in and requested that it be a, don't, I'm not a donation, but you know what I'm saying. Right. and go through the whole process of that whatsoever. So was the ball dropped up front of not stating this was a donation and now it's trying to make up for an error? I think that's, I, here's my deal. They get hung up on the word loan. They need to get that out of their system. There is it's, no loan. It's the oversight they're afraid no, of. it's the, oh, huh? showed it right there. The <laughs> only thing about it is, for a, all, their, all the EDC is saying for a year we want to maintain, not control, <laughs> Not control, just to make sure it's done right so you're on your feet with the documentation, with the tax return. So are you willing to give up that control? I'll, I'll give it to them tomorrow, but they're going to have to get somebody else to do problem. it. What? That, that did not come up until you gave us that document. What did not Okay, hold he, on. He said it's not a loan. Wait just a minute. We've, I think we've discussed this at length. We could be here until tomorrow morning and never get beyond where we are now. Does council want to make a decision on this? Any more input into it? We had quite a long discussion on it. One more thing. One more thing. He's talking about we haven't done anything with the money that we've raised. It was only at the time. It was only two months that we had raised that money. We had 
just gotten liquid. We had to figure out how much we needed to put back for emergencies and, and where we were going were. forward. We were not given that opportunity because we were presented with this document that blew us out of the water and we just couldn't. I personally, I couldn't take it anymore. I just, and I, I am not incompetent. I had a CPA advising me on my records. I didn't even give Rudy on my records because I knew he was going to pick them apart. And I'm sorry, I'm getting personal now. Um, but no, uh, we are not incompetent as, as He said he didn't want oversight and he said it wasn't a loan. I don't see that there's an issue anymore. I, I think we have some issue of confusion that we have three boards here. Yeah, we have three boards. Here. And he's on all three of them. But otherwise, yes. we, we have no involvement in the board of, of any 501c3 whatsoever. Which leads us to where? I don't know. I don't even know what, like. <laughs> Abolish the EDC? Yeah. Clean the tracks and exactly. all that. Yeah. Sure <laughs> I don't even know what there's a decision to be made about. Really. There's no authority for the council. There's the loan. There's, there's well, no there's loan. no authority for the EDC or the city council to have any control over. We don't have any control. Well, it was st it was stated to us. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was put in this document. Okay. It was in writing. Okay. I said in the okay. public hearing that that okay. I thought they needed oversight. Wait a minute. One of the repercussions of if they just didn't pay. I mean, if you say it's a loan and they decide not to pay, then what happens? Nothing. 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 Well, well. I'm not hearing documentation. This, long. this is not a court case. We're just trying to get finality to this because this has gone on far too long. Okay. We'll shoot each other in the foot and be done. <laughs> there you go. Like away. I mean, goodness. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to ask a question of the council and Rudy is the EDC and you guys in the audience. <laughs> if we've agreed that it's not a loan. And if we can agree that for the assistant aspect of it to ensure that everything's done in compliance with the law, with the IRS and the state of Texas or whatever, maybe allow what was initially discussed, the, the year oversight to the point of making sure the baselines are there for someone to follow up on. It's not anything that's being done for, y'all may think it's a control or whatever, the bottom line is, it's for the citizens of this town. And y'all keeping on with this yin, 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 yin crap is going to affect the citizens, which it already has, because there's a lot of this yin, yin going on. I hear it up here. Not, not, not necessarily from Rudy. I hear it from citizens. From who? I won't go into details, but citizens I hear a lot. Citizens that the benefit the of the, the organization is for the citizens. Stop, stop. We know who it's for the benefit. Can I say one thing though about the fact? Why not let the, the whole intent was to get it in an organization format to where it could benefit the citizens and let the EDC pay for it. If you guys can rent the rooms out as far as I'm getting 10% of the back, send your five or $10 check showing y'all's good faith gesture. Be done with the loan aspect. Let the citizens gain from it and be done with it. That's all we've asked. That's all I'm asking. Because the whole intent for the money was to help get it revitalized. And if we have no authority over this to do anything, then this evolves back, because they asked to put on the agenda. This evolves back to Rudy and you. Leslie hasn't said anything. You keep telling me I can't say anything. That is driving me crazy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been here three and a half hours. Let us speak. What Rudy had to say just now sounded great. Every single yeah, one of you. If I was sitting there, I would believe every word he said. But the problem is, this is not all true. He has gone to Tina. He has gone to Mona. He's gone to Mitch. He's gone to Randy saying we're a train wreck. That affects me. That's personal to me. And I, we worked so hard to get this thing up and running. We were not failing. We were doing a great job. 
And for somebody to say they're a train wreck, yeah, that affects me. And, and I don't, this is really bad because I don't feel like I want to be part of it anymore. And it breaks my heart because I loved working for those seniors. And every single one of those people worked so, so hard to get it up and running. And the whole thing just breaks my heart. That's not up to me. That's up to the EDC. I, as far as I'm concerned, it, the word loan should have never been used in the first place. Okay. 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 Now, now, my opinion is, you know what opinions are like, but I'm going to give mine. My opinion is, as long as they're making a good faith gesture and doing what they agreed to do, I don't think it's an issue. That part is, that's a moot point. Okay? That part of it is a moot point. Okay? As far as, like Tina said, as far as the... This horse is dead. Yes. Well, listen to me. Listen to me. He's dead now. We'll discuss that the rest of it later, but as far as I'm concerned, there is no need to even call it a loan. As long as they're making a good faith effort every time they went to the building and paying that timbership back, I think everybody's happy. They didn't want to turn control over to them. You talked about that. Do you? Huh? Do you? I want to make sure everything is running properly and make sure it's right, it's right for the records. All I asked was in the beginning, and all I still ask was whoever was doing it, sit down with me and understand what I offered to show them time and time again what needs to be done. So they don't want me to do that. They can do it on the same. I don't care. But I will tell you this. And this is a, uh, as honest as I can be about it. They want it. They can have it. Don't have a problem with that. Don't. Do not. Do not. Go ahead. Speak. Please talk to you. Once this transfer is made, don't ask me for any help. Don't come back and ask the EDC for any help. Don't ask me for anything as far as financial stuff goes. Don't ask me to help you with your taxes. I'm not going to tell you when they're due. It's all on you. Okay. Okay? If, if you have to pay money, you think it's funny? It ain't funny. We wouldn't be in a situation there if it wasn't for you. Don't back I'm down. Yeah. 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 I'm just telling you. Okay. So you guys get together and have a meeting and you want to turn it in to them? They can. I will tell you this, Miss Reedy. I will not have a meeting with any of them unless you're there. All right. I'll be there. Can I ask? Okay. Um, Make it short. Okay. Does it negate the nonprofit status to have a profit making business in the back room? Uh, there's no profit making business in the back room. Well, we've heard that there will be. Oh, what profit making business is that? Allie, would you address that issue, please? Thank yes, you. Yes, Allie. As a, a good thing for the seniors in our community, Rudy has spent money on a program to do the taxes for the community seniors at no cost. Yes, I understand that, and I'm all for that. I think that's oh, wonderful. Yeah. But we were also told that you will also bring in your private business as well. I don't know who tell you that. No, before, he's not. Right? Mm -mm. He does that in his house. I do all that in my house. I, why would I want to do it to see each other? You're there five hours a day. <laughs> but you want that's to worry about that. That's, that's what happens when you get to listen. Yeah. I'm going to suggest yeah. 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 Come we to the take 7 11 and 7 12 and roll it over to the next meeting and adjourn for the evening because it's 10 o'clock. Four hours is long enough. Do you hear a motion to adjourn? I move it. I second it. I'm out of here. I'm out of here.